I'm on uh, the Fans of Power podcast, although this is a now for something different. Hey, there you go. Always trying to stop saying completely different. You don't want to get sued by the Monty Python crew. Um, well, most of them are dead now. Um, uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm James Etock. I'm the guest uh, talking about all things Ghostbusters with uh, Tyler T-Rex, Baker, Nathan, Nasty Kennedy or Nasty Nathan Kennedy, and Joe, the only person who's really seen the intro to my forthcoming YouTube channel, Amato. There you go. <laughs> Like that. You know, I, I I'm kind of offended that he he got to see it and, and uh, Tyler and I. Yeah, just because seen it. he happened to like, I just need to start seeing James random messages. That way, I show up at the top of his list every day. So if he has <laughs> something stuff where he wants to share something, oh look, that, that, that Tyler guy, you know, the guy who's angry all the day. I'll say yeah, but there. Your, your your messages usually start with um, high sexy, and I'm always a little bit like, ah, I don't know how to, you know. <laughs> Joe, that's private. I mean, Joe, James, that's private. <laughs> <laughs> Though oh behave there. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet, James, but uh James, I got the work print of the movie that we're talking about today. Yes. So I, I need to yeah. sit down and watch that and I guess Tyler I'll find a way to share that with you as well. So you can check I, it out. I, I can I can just share oh. it by my yeah, well, I feel like we shouldn't be talking about this publicly because uh, we're well, basically each true. sharing content. Well yeah. hey, you know. <laughs> is, is there something else I'm not aware of here that everyone just decides to tell Tyler? Oh, no, no, we'll, we'll get into well, it. We'll Joe, get into Joe you got anything that uh, you haven't told Tyler that the rest um, of us know? I I masturbate three times a day. Does that work? Well, Joe, we already knew that. Ah, okay. Yeah, but you've done you know two. One of those. Oh, I'm, I'm up to three now. <laughs> you know, just trying to you know like exercise everything out. You know, just staying in shape. So, all right, but pretty exercise much no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. They need to come out. Quite frequently. <laughs> God, that was, yeah, what a player word. Get the demons out. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, that's what we can start calling it and getting the demons out. <laughs> oh, God. It's too early. Joe's head starts spinning around. <laughs> We're only not even five minutes into this thing, James. Oh, man. Okay. Hey, um, Grimbot told me to keep my hands up during the show while I have yeah, like this. <laughs> all times, please. Oh, well, quickly, it seems like there's a lot of people in the chat. Let me give some shout outs and then we can start getting going. And um, we have Mick, uh, McDJ here. Did I say that right? I don't know. I'm sorry. Brian Brummagen, Monkey uh, Cough Cat, uh, Zentron, Daniel Carhoonan, Jenny Q is here. I'm scrolling. Uh, Paulrick, um, uh, Jaime Mares. Sobek, Mondo Bizarro, um, Casey Duncan, um, almost there. Uh, of course, Grim just mentioned that. Peter Oldman, uh, and no, Peter. I think I got everybody. I think I did. If I missed anybody, I apologize. You know, when I see the name Peter Oldman, I think of, um, I don't know if you ever seen that uh, one movie, High Anxiety with Mel Brooks, and he sees Professor Little Old Man. But he calls him Professor Little Old Man. But he's like, it's not Little Old Man, it's Little Old Man. <laughs> So that's a very good uh, impression. <laughs> well, thank you. But <laughs> well, that's it. That's oh shit! And Adam Gabbard. All right, James. Oh, well, fuck. Let's just ramble. But go ahead, however you want. We can all. <laughs> well, now you guys lead the way. But obviously, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here to talk all things. Busting makes me feel good. Busting ghosts, not busting nuts. <laughs> I was going to say, Joe, good. Joe, yeah. Joe Quite it could have... Uh, That's why Joe's like, we put Joe's face like, uh, like nut, nut busters, like with him. As, like, the ghost. <laughs> and you see it squirting <laughs> out right off the logo. <laughs> oh, God. What have we done? Oh, man. How did Get this, on it, Grimbox. How did send it so quickly? This is... <laughs> it's, instead of the ghost, it's a sperm. I... It's a fucking sperm. Oh, no. <laughs> 
Christ. Okay. There, there's, a, there's, there's your next T-shirt, Joe, to, to, to put on the market. I mean, place. Boston makes me feel so there good. There you go. Boston nuts makes me feel so good. Holy That's shit. Good. You think I could get away with it on Tee Public? Maybe Probably. I should Are you it. kidding? Half the shit they put on there is something along those lines. So I think he'd be fine. I think he'd be, yeah, more than fine, Joe, yeah. And they're, they're pretty liberal in their in their their takes or in tastes on the yeah. public. <laughs> That's an understatement. Oh yeah. my goodness. Um, oh, but yeah, I guess. Yeah, let's. Well, let's James, talk James this is your possible. it's your favorite movie of all time. Oh man. Yeah, I um, I've got such a strong attachment to this movie. Although, as as I'll discuss, there were a few years where it kind of had to go out of my life actually for nearly 10 years but um yeah like uh, i actually you know usually when we we did the foot fans power together i don't you know don't make any notes because obviously we're just shooting the breeze um, but i thought like oh this there's some things i kind of want to address so I, i've got you know i'm looking at you guys on my phone and i've got my laptop to the left and i've actually got um i made a few notes of like oh remember to talk about this and just before about an hour before we came on <clears throat> Joe was mentioning something to do with, uh, <laughs> it sounds like being lewd again, uh, busting, um, another uh, another busters, and he reminded me of something that I did as a kid. Oh, this is <laughs> sounded Damn, really James. weird. Um, We're going to talk about James', James first Joe's masturbatory experience. He's doing he just exactly. I make you James jump into the path. He's going down the rabbit hole of my shit and insane. We'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there to the the thing. But I, I suddenly dug out something uh, oh, like did an you, old. James? Yeah, like, no, honestly, like an old illustration book I, from 1988, this is, November 88, so there's my old illustration, but this relates to Ghostbusters and everything, but um, yeah, Ghostbusters for me was like, I, I still I still remember my earliest memory of it was, there was a show in the UK, like Saturday morning TV show, you know, on Saturday mornings with the, the kids shows, and we only had four channels in England, so two of those channels on Saturday mornings were dedicated when I come to about midday from about seven to midday were, um, you know, targeted towards kids. So you had on um, BBC during the early eighties was a, a TV show called, I think it was like Saturday Superstore. I say, I think I remember it was called Saturday Superstore. And they were showing um, clips from Ghostbusters. I remember the first clip I ever saw was, um, it was the shot of, you know, Peter Venkman in the Sedgwick Hotel and you see Slimer, you know, come in, Ray, See, or onion head. That's the thing I always remember him as onion head because, yeah, I'll get into that as well. But you see at the end of the corridor, I remember as a kid just being like, this is really scary. I remember like this scene of, you know, uh, that was scary to me. It was scary. Yeah. It wasn't cute. It was like this because it's, it's set up so beautifully. And, and that's, uh, you know, again, we'll get into it. But like the beauty of Ghostbusters for me has always been it's a, it's a horror comedy. Whereas, I, I think a lot of people often get it wrong with their takes on it, like the um, 2016 uh, movie where they did comedy horror. And it's like, no, it's a horror comedy. Right. It, it kind of wills you into that sense of, oh, God, you know, li library ghost, prime example. The first big scare in the movie is terrifying. That scared me as a kid. Like, So my earliest memories, yeah, seeing Ghostbusters and thinking like, but there was still something really intriguing about it. I remember thinking... You know, and they showed a few other clips as well. You know, it's like I said, like a morning kids show. And they're like, oh, this movie's coming out, Ghostbusters. But obviously, even back then, at the very, even before the movie had been released, they obviously knew the appeal for kids. It was, you know, it was a, it was a film by the people that had been involved in Stripes and Animal House and all this stuff. And, and the, you know, the Saturday Night Live crew. And yet there was still, a, a, even at that earlier stage, there was still, a, 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 it was it could be marketed at kids. And I think that was the beauty of it to some degree. This could have easily, I think when you, you go look into the history of it, Dan Aykroyd's original script, it could have easily been a very different movie that wasn't appealing to kids. That was like a 15, no, not 15, whatever, like a, a, an adult AA movie or something. Um, I mean, obviously there's still a scene where Ray... Uh, He's <laughs> um, fellated by a ghost. But as a kid, I remember seeing that and thinking, oh, Ray's pants come down. He does a funny face. Never, ever thinking. Me neither. <laughs> I don't I don't know at what, at what point I, I, I think either read about that because it just never occurred to me that that yeah. was a, a, anything sexual as a kid and even into yeah. my... Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny when you look back. It's like, oh, my God. I remember being... So I went to... So, yeah, I, going into the whole thing. So we're really excited. And then my uncle... Um, and his two daughters and, and me, so my cousins and I, went to the cinema 
to see it one evening. So I, I you know, I saw Ghostbusters in the cinema. I remember like absolutely loving it. But I remember the biggest scare for me was that library ghost. Um, and then in the months and the year, I guess, that followed, I was buying everything. I've still got a magazine um, called Starburst, which you can find online. It was a it was published by Marvel UK and they did like a Ghostbusters special and the movie had just come out and they, it was like a pictorial, you know, you got, you got. Isn't it kind of like Star Log, I guess, almost like Yes, that's exactly what I think it's, uh, I I, I would even use that it's, you know, I don't know if they're associated in it anyway, but Star Log and. um, Because I've seen, I've seen certain covers of Starburst magazine. I've often thought like, that must be like, you know, the UK's version of Star Log magazine. Yeah. But you could also, where, where, um, where I lived, you could also buy Star Log. So anytime there was, you know, uh, Ghostbusters or as the years went by, the Master Universe live action stuff, I made sure to always buy the Starlog or those those magazines. But, um, yeah, I just, I remember, like, buying every piece of Ghostbusters merchandise. And this was before any cartoons have come out. I was just obsessed with this movie and the characters and just the, I, I, the, the, the idea of, I guess, you know, Ghostbusting. It, it seems like such a... Um, an obvious thing and like uh, you know but but when back then I don't know in the early 80s it just seemed so unique and obviously if, if we were older uh, much older like maybe 10-15 years we probably would have been aware of you know Filmation's The Ghostbusters but frankly thank god I never ever saw that because um, from what I've seen of it yeah, <laughs> yeah I still haven't seen it I'm going to keep it that way <laughs> yeah yeah it's best like I, I've, I've always said like I love Filmation as, a, as an animation studio some of their live action stuff is obviously very good, but Filmation, and I will take this to my grave, Filmation could never do comedy centric shows. They yeah. could do they could do action adventure with comedy, like you have funny moments in He Man and She-Ra and um, Brave Star even, and all these shows. But their their Tom and Jerry show, their um, yeah, Mighty Mouse is more action. But Hero High, oh my god, if you've ever had to sit, I had to sit through all thirteen episodes of Hero High. That was, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. I'd say, uh, you can watch some Hitler propaganda movies if you want, but don't watch Hero High. Yeah, I remember, isn't that when I said Star, it looked like Star Child, maybe her design was based off of the one girl that was a little bit tall. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, it's, it's it, but like, yeah, so Filmation really never did comedy. So I kind of, you know, I'm not sure what I would have made of the, the Ghostbusters. But yeah, the movie comes out and um, I remember just, yeah, just absolutely loving it and buying all these magazines um, I remember being like, if my parents were in the room, I'd hurriedly turn the page on one of them because it had the, uh, oh shit, it's the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man written in, and I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> did my parents see the word, oh shit, you know, so I'd quickly turn the page. But um, yeah, I remember that book also, I think they released two versions, it was a hardcover, a softcover, and the book, you know, it had basically photos from the movie and you would turn the page, and but it had each bits, each dialogue was kind of color coded. So Ray would speak in magenta, uh, Venkman in cyan, that kind of thing throughout the book. So you could easily put the the names to the, the, the things and everything. It was, it was really beautifully constructed. But yeah, even back then, I remember like it was all about, you know, Onion Head and the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. And, but it's funny, like the movie didn't actually appear on UK TV until, my goodness, I think it was either 87 or 88. Wow. So you're looking at a good two to three year gap. But in that time, you know, and it was, I mean, you know, never shown on TV in between then. And, uh, you know, video rental in the UK was still not in its infancy. But, it, you know, I don't I don't really remember renting Ghostbusters, the movie as a kid. I know it was a huge, huge release by RCA Columbia in America, wasn't it? The old, uh, yeah. I've, I've got it on my shelf. Uh, but... like, right, right behind me is the, is the VHS poster. That's the VHS poster, yeah. yeah. I've, I've, got, I've got the video on my shelf over there, and it's that, um, that RCA release. I remember it did huge numbers, from what I understand. Um, and, yeah, I just, I just, I was totally in love with that movie, even though it wasn't constantly, I remember drawing comics with ghostbusters and again i'm I'm basing everything on the movie i I sent you guys that um beautiful illustration i did of um, the no ghost where i couldn't spell the word ghost and instead spelled it like well you can tell i I tried to spell the word ghost realize i've got the st around the wrong way no ghost (laughs) something like that um which sounds like hip-hop speak i got to have it um actually let me let me put this on the buster rhymes days let me put this on the screen so everybody Here we can, go. can see. I know this. Nathan's got this illustration. 
So every, everyone at home can check this out. Oh, so we won't be able to see it. Uh, yeah, you guys won't be able to see it, but oh. I mean, you know, yeah, you can go into our uh, group chat that we got on Facebook. And you guys can look at that again. But uh, here it is for everyone at home. I should have just put this in the center of the screen for everybody instead of our <laughs> now for something different logo. But yeah, that was my um. There was actually I found another illustration shortly after I emailed you guys. But that's that, that's my um. I don't know, just random no ghost run. I drew that around my nan's house. So I was visiting my nan one evening and I was and she always had like a drawing pad and I would just sit there and sketch whilst my dad was, you know, catching up with his mother. And I remember I drew that obviously with a red felt tip pen. I don't know what if I remember rightly on that illustration, instead of drawing like the proper kind of little thing on his head, I drew like it's, it's almost like he's had it tied up together like a uh, a man bun or something. But um yeah, that was one of my that's one of the earliest illustrations I still have um in existence. It's weird. Not one of my finest moments, but you know, I was I was seven eight years old. I was quite proud of that. Uh, so to so say, I can uh, I can draw the um, logo pretty well. But that's one of those things I can draw the logo off by heart. Even the f looking at Tyler right now behind him, that logo, I got all that in my brain. Every kind of the amount of times I drew that logo, I dread to think it was just fingers there, that goes there, that in the line, the hand comes out here, which is why I get so annoyed when you see. Ghostbusters released again and again on Blu-ray and DVD, and they have that awful manipulated logo where it's like he's doing like a one and a two. Or I hate that two. too. Yeah. yeah, there's the one where he was doing like uh, he's holding up his hand. He's got three. It's like what even is that? Stop it! Stop it with your manipulation of a classic logo. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I mean, so I was you know deeply in love with um, the movie, and like for you guys, what's because we can't make it all about me waffling because we know what I'd like to do. What's your kind of earliest memories of? Um, Ghostbusters, whilst I enjoy a Coke Zero. I'm not sponsored. Oh, look at that. I didn't even send that to James. You know, that, that, that's just wonderful there. I actually, Coke, Coke Zero is my go-to now. You got you to get that, that zero sugar. No sugar in there. You get everything no else, the same benefits, same taste. Not a sponsor, like James said. No. Uh, well, Joe, you go ahead. Because I, I with you and James being... Well, I mean, you're definitely about a good 20 years older than James and about 50 uh -huh. years older than the rest of us. So, um. uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> so it was in the theater and it, it was like, yeah, basically it was Ghostbusters mania when that came out. I mean, there was tons of hype on everything, stickers, puffy stickers. In fact, like a crazy story I have was, oh, I can't say an age when I was younger i was able Such to girl, fuck Joe. off listen listen so there was this um uh, i can't say the name of the company either okay there was this place to where they would Redacted. package up it's like i'm trying to be careful with everything where they would package up stickers and little mini toys and trinkets and i remember that's where i got a lot of my he-man stickers but also that's where i got my ghostbuster stickers because why can't I would you say like, the name of the company just shut up. Let me finish, you fucker. So anyways, so there was X amount of things that would go in each box. And it was like a kind of a, a job when I had when I was too young to actually work for a real living. But I got extra money. And I remember seeing these puffy ghost a buses. <laughs> or called begging. <laughs> Pretty much. But no, it's um, they had the puffy stickers. And I still have, I should have brought my fucking sticker book. So basically, Joe book. worked at a, a, a place where they just employed a bunch of kids. And that's why I can't yeah. say the company name. <laughs> And he just stole merchandise from them. I didn't steal. They gave it to me for along with money with a good good job well if done. If he would just I, go home. I was really efficient <laughs> and I could I could package and count good. Um, listen, so he said those puppy stickers. Joe's got the like, little uh the little I don't know what the fuck they're called, but it's got all those beads to help that's what people do to count with. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, there you go. That's what yeah. Joe was doing. <laughs> Listen, so anyways, and the puppy stickers, you know, we came, we saw, we kicked its ass, it had cussing on it. And, and my ma, she didn't mind that. But I remember when she said, I was like, wow, they're actually cussing on a sticker. And so I have that, and I plastered all over everything. But I mean, just the movie, the well, hype. you were probably 15 at the time, so I'm sure your mom was Shut all right up. with that. <laughs> so, yeah, so I mean, there's just tons of shit. I was telling James a story. It's, it's, it's just a nerdy dork story, but as kids... <laughs> 
in the neighborhood. Oh, oh God, James is right. <laughs> I told him this, and he's probably like, what the fuck? Look at this. More, no, 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 more, more things you guys are keeping from the rest of us on the show. No, no. I just told him the story. I was like, I don't know if I want to say it on the show because it's going to sound insane, but I might as well. Oh, but you we brought, uh, yeah. How does that compare to any of the other shit that comes out of your mouth on a weekend? Well, this is going to sound so insane, but it's it was my obsession. <laughs> I'm sure with I will not my bat an eye. So, in the neighborhood, when it was around summertime, and of course, here comes the ice cream trucks. When the kids would go up there to get the ice creams, a lot of them got jacked and beat up. And this just happened so much, they got jacked for the ice cream. So yeah, and, Who was doing the... Uh... I was not doing it. So anyways, me and my buddy, we sat there and we drew up all these flyers and we called it Cone Busters. And I got to find the old photo. I have it. And it's an ice cream cone in that symbol. And it's to protect anybody. We said we would help anybody that's getting jacked for their ice cream. It's so fucking stupid. And I know I still got the photos downstairs in my pile of so, all my drawings. Joe, uh, were you Farouk or Bradshaw? Ah, oh, you were Farouk. I don't know. <laughs> APA? Yeah, we got yeah. APA. But yeah, so really, it was sad. The kids really would get beat up for their ice cream a lot in the area so we called it cone busters and we would say we'd help people and we were plastering them on trees phone poles it was so fucking nuts but i still got a couple of those flyers what was the what was the payment from the kids to you or were you just doing it out of the kindness of (laughs) no we just like it was like we would help and protect them that was it no money we're so fucking corny we really put them everywhere and we drew each one we didn't have no photocopy shit back then oh god that makes me sound old (laughs) so So we're drawing uh... So, I could just imagine those guys being all oh, shit, man. It's the cone busters. It's the cone busters. Oh, <laughs> fuck. That's what I mean when you're kids, you do the stupidest <laughs> shit. But it's hilarious. It's a fucking ice Don't cream Don't mess cone with there. that kid with the wavy hair. He bites. <laughs> I just love so the idea is some like really like uh, you know 19, 18, 19 year olds like bullying some kids with their ice cream. Like, hey man, you're gonna give us, you're gonna give us that ice cream, man. Yeah, they look like greasers. They got grease in their hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Joe's got like a just a, the Ghostbusters. He's got a gap in his teeth because yeah, because he's still losing teeth. And, yeah. You know, his mustache <laughs> so hasn't good. quite come in yet, so it's very. It's kind of pubescent a little bit. They yeah. call us the Orlando Bloom and shit. You know. <laughs> but we really cherished getting ice cream because you, you were. You could have went a... to jail for that, Joe, because. I know you were like 23 at the time. I was beating not up beating kids. people up for it. Yeah, it's just Joe, really... as a 39 year old man at the time, you should have known better. <laughs> but so, really, everybody tried to do it then and tried to stay in groups and make sure they were safe when they were getting ice cream. It was, it was really fucking sad. People Did you, were... you guys? I bet you guys wore sunglasses, right? And you're standing there like this. No, the cone busters. Yeah. Oh, on, their big, on their big wheels driving up to the truck, you know, to make sure. 39 year old Joe Amato on a big wheel. <laughs> <laughs> if um, oh, if, if uh, do sounds listening right now, he needs to get his artistic pen with this, like Please. the cone busters. <laughs> yeah, that's got to happen. We could put that on a shirt. Oh my god, yeah, cone busters yeah. protection agency. Oh my god, it's got to happen. All the ideas are coming out tonight. Joe's right. going to be a very rich man by the time we're done. Shit. <laughs> right. So that's just some of my stories, like I said. But they yeah, thoroughly enjoyed the movie. It was great. It was a great time, but it created a lot of memories and crazy shit but well, for yeah tyler and i on a, a complete other end of the spectrum because when tyler and i were we were born when that movie came out yeah so wow. my experience for it was completely ass backwards i started with the cartoons and watched ghostbusters 2 and then watched ghostbusters wow so, so a question i'm just going to jump in with because i know a few people i've had this conversation with which do you prefer one or two So, uh, see the fact you have to think about it, kind of. Well, you know that I'm not saying that's your answer, but like for me, Ghostbusters Two is I, I, I'm I really don't like it at all. Oh, we're going to address that, believe me. <laughs> but, but but the thing I, w- I want to say about Nate, what you're saying there is, um, I know quite a few people that saw the second one first mm-hmm. and then the first one. They prefer the second one because it was their introduction to the whole thing. Um, it, <laughs> for me, I think it's more of a. The nost- I don't. It's not that I prefer it because I do think that Ghostbusters one to me narrowly is the better movie over two. But okay. it's just that nostalgia for it. So because for me it was at, being obsessed with the cartoon every every Saturday checking that out and then finally getting to because I didn't go to the theaters unfortunately to see Ghostbusters two. I had to wait to rent it. 
and I was like, oh, holy shit. And at the same time, it's like uh, Hardee's had their promotional cups. stuff for it, where you got the cups and you had the noisemakers and all that stuff. Yeah, I had one of the noisemakers. Which I, I'll probably get up and go grab those again, because I have all four of them. Um, and the cups. Shit, I'll probably get up and get it, get, it, get the t- cups, too. So I just we kind of... We have no Hardee's around here. We didn't have that. Do, do they, poor. Is it Carl's Jr. there, Joe? We didn't have that either. Okay. No, I, don't, I don't know how far that... Uh, <laughs> that change was made but uh okay. yeah so for me it's more of a nostalgia thing but i do prefer ghostbusters yeah. over ghostbusters too time uh it was pretty much kind of around it was 87 um that's when i was introduced to ghostbusters i think it was they they kind of blend together seeing the movie and the cartoon the cartoon was like really big and then i think the movie may have been somewhere in either late 87 or early 88 because i got ghostbusters on vhs for christmas santa claus brought it to me on christmas of 88 i was really big into it at that point uh watching the cartoon religiously on tv i had all four ghostbusters uh christmas 87 along with stay puff and nectar one and a sticker book so that was like my big ghostbusters slash he-man christmas and so when i got got on vhs i even seeing it in the video store, like I even owned it and still like seeing that VHS in the video store. Like it was something magical, which is why I had to get this poster. I just have always loved this simple artwork uh, as a poster. And um, so I, uh, and I, I saw Ghostbusters 2 in theaters. I, I went probably around opening weekend. I'm jealous. To go see it. Yeah. So that was, that was something my mom took me to go see. And it was scary at the same time. Uh, it's it, like watching. It, it really was. And it it's... was. It's like what, James what was weird though is, yeah, and it's what's weird though is watching the first one as a kid, I was fascinated by it, and as I got a little bit older, around five years old, I started seeing things differently, and it started scaring the shit out of me, like to the point where I was dreading the terror dog scene when the hands come out of the of the of the chair and attack Dana, freaked the shit out of me, and when it's that and the, um, you know the the terror dog chasing after uh, uh Lewis, like I I just thought, oh my god, it scared the fuck out of me like not so much i was afraid to go to bed but i'm sitting there watching and quietly oh my god yeah it's coming it's coming, it's coming. like you know it sounds weird two things i had to look away from the telly during the 80s this is no word of a lie what the second one's gonna make you laugh the first was always the library ghost i literally could not it that was scene. scary yeah because it is you know the fact that they they build that that, that uh, creature you know obviously it's the live action actress playing the librarian that turns into the creature and then they made, you, you must have seen like the behind the scenes material, they made the scarier one, which they ended up using in Fright Night, I think they said, because it was too, they went too far. And, and I think it was Ivan Reimann was like, yeah, you need to kind of pull it back a little bit. Let's stick with this one with the protruding jaw, you know. Rah, rah. And, but I, I, that scared the hell out of me, the, <laughs> the other scene that I could never watch. Because to this day, it still sends a shiver down my spine, not the good kind of like, oh, that's awesome. It's like, uh, is the shot of, Optimus Prime, dead, and his head does this, dum, 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 dum. and it's all oh, he, yeah. when he's just grey and dead, no eyes. That scene is just, I, that shot is terrifying. It's, it, it, from an animation point of view, it's timed so eerily because it's it's like, and he just his head just turns sideways. Like, oh, Optimus Prime just died, but it's you know, and it's kind of it's the music towards the end of that is even eerie. It's like, and like Daniel's crying on his hand. It's just like. Oh, I don't like that. Those are the two scenes I could do for a while. Did you try and write a letter to uh, to Hasbro that you were uh, upset about that? Uh, uh, yeah, but, it's all right, James. Uh, you can admit you were the reason why uh, you ruined G.I. Joe the G. movie. G.I. Joe the movie. Why Duke oh, G. I. Joe died. The movie. Don't kill Duke. Now, bear in mind, in the UK, one, surprisingly, as big a Transformers fan as I was, I saw Ghostbusters Cinema. I saw Secret of the Sword of the Cinema. I never saw Transformers the movie at the cinema. And at the time, I was a huge Transformers fan. But I knew Optimus Prime died because the UK comics were... You know, the movie, I think, came out maybe a year after its release date in America. So the UK comic was exploring the whole themes. If you, the, the UK Transformers comic is, is legendary, what they did. Um, and they started incorporating all this time travel business. And they played with the fact that <laughs> so we had Transformers movie takes place in 2005. But, um, yeah, within that, I kind of saw that Optimus Prime died. But also we didn't get... Um, G.I. Joe, the movie, straight to VHS, we got Action Force, the movie, oh, yeah. with Sergeant Slammer. I'm going to teach you jo- uh, full force. That was our, that was the motto. In all four. I'd love to show Larry Houston one day. It's so say, weird that you guys, uh, between that and uh, 
Ninja Turtles, your hero yeah. turtles, like man, you guys cut the balls off of everything, you guys. But got it, but it's funny, like with um, with uh, I'm going off subject slightly, but with hero turtles, that still didn't harm. I mean, obviously, visually in terms of episodes, and it forced the change where Michelangelo lost his nunchucks and he had the grappling hook. What did he do? Um, when when but but the, the the popularity of that cartoon still managed to get make hero tales ninja tales like as big as it was in america over here it was huge in the uk it was like massive um but yeah in uh with regards to um yeah ninja tales gi joe and action force yeah that was yeah, that, that was something else but like larry houston uh, the you know he obviously storyboarded that gorgeous opening to gi mm-hmm. joe the movie the action force the movie opening same thing but they they edit bits out because they time it to the action force theme song you don't get any of the sound effects from the movie intro um and what you get instead is a chopped up and scenes are replaced oh, so not replaced repositioned so it's really weird like i grew up with the action force the movie intro and thought it was the best thing ever i was like oh, it's amazing and then you see the gi joe version was like this is even more amazing because logistically and you know, on a linear sense, it makes sense now. Because I mean, that movie, that movie intro is amazing. I'll have to look that. I never, even, never even knew that there was an alteration uh, for that. I mean, because I've never really dug into Action Force and like its transition to the UK. Like I've just known that that's what it was called over there, and that's I never dug any further than that. So now I, I have to like check out. What oh yeah, Action if you Force got the, the, the Action like. Force intros on YouTube, Action Force, and um, but the, but the dubbing is brilliant on it because it's like. You know, I'm Sergeant Slammer, special drilling jocks, uh, special drilling instructor for Action Force, and then it's clearly, and then you get Sergeant Slaughter doing the voice. Okay, meatballs. You know, and then it just it's so bad. <laughs> well, and but obviously, yeah, like so, we didn't we didn't get that movie at all in cinemas. Um, I don't think you guys did. We either. didn't either. We're going to get to see it in cinemas next month, though. That's true. Oh, yeah. Please, please let them do the four three versions because I would love to get that Blu-ray, but they did this. It's like, how can you chop, chop the top and bottom of such a gorgeous-looking movie? But um, that's cool. They're, they're showing it. Um, sorry, you kind of went side, sidetracked there. But, yeah, uh, that's what to... we do, James. That's well, what we, we does. do. That's what we do. Um, but yeah, going back to Ghostbusters, how do we get to that point? Oh, yeah, scary scene. So yeah, like Ghostbusters 2, I, equally scary movie. The one, the one that did it for me, Ghostbusters 2, the nanny ghost. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Uh, me too. Oh, uh, oh my God, that, that by far was the scariest shit I ever saw. Like, and just that, that slow that. impending doom in the distance too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was uh, always uh, so scared of seeing babies in harm when I was little. Yeah, because so you had seeing, your brother. Seeing little Oscar. And yeah, because of my brother, and I had no idea for years that that was Janos as the yeah, name. Janos, I, yeah. I, I just thought it was a scary old lady, which is creepy enough as it is. Yeah. I'm like, ah, I had to know. turn away when I would watch it. I couldn't look at it. I could still yeah. hear it, and I was like, it's too yeah, much. That, that, that music when when Janos gets close and his eyes close, uh. like, I just think it's a nasty old lady and grabs him. Leave the baby alone, God. <laughs> Like that I, really um, traumatized me. I, I saw Ghostbusters two in August of eighty nine in Canada. So me, my father and I went to Canada in eighty nine. And if you know anything about the summer of eighty nine movies, mm-hmm. it's ridiculous. And me and my dad went out to Canada, not knowing that we we got to Canada. My dad dad's friend emigrated out there in the late seventies, so we were staying with him and his family. He had, he had a, a, a kid my age as well. And, you know, we did. We were there for two and a half weeks, and we did all the science Niagara. My dad had been to Canada in 73, and we were going in, in um, 89, doing all the science Niagara Falls, but pretty much every night. And my dad, I went back, or I found a few a few years ago whilst doing, doing all this photo archive, and I found my dad had kept a diary of sorts. But in, uh, as my dad is awesome, he, he'd noted every film we'd seen. Mm. The films we saw that summer, Batman, of course. Yeah. Yep. The Abyss. Um, uh, oh god, Parenthood. Um, I love that movie. Parenthood's amazing. Um, Ghostbusters two. Uh, just every film from that whole thing. There was like fourteen. Uh, Turner and Hooch. <laughs> Turner and Hooch is actually really good. I haven't seen it since then. I watched some yeah. parts of it one time. That was it. It's good. It but yeah, up. if you name any film from that summer, we must. Last Crusade. I, I got to ask that. Uh, yeah, Last Crusade. Indiana so, yeah. Jones. In, Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones, Last Crusade, we saw, yeah. 
about UHF with the Where Are Yes, Yankees? we saw UHF. Holy shit, man. Yeah. My God. Because my dad was that? like, my, my dad had always been like a fan of Weird Al since E.T. and stuff like that. But we went to the cinema. I remember it was like really empty in there. Of course. And, um, <laughs> yeah. It didn't I do like, so well. Literally, I was watching something about UHF about two weeks ago. Because my dad's, my dad's got it on DVD. That's how much he, he loved that movie. And we did. And um, oh, it's, it's, me and my dad still love the one of the... Um, look Raul up, look down, Raul here Kingdom. goes Mr. Frying Pan. <laughs> it's just so good. And it was obviously Michael Richards, like one of his first breakout roles, and he's so good in it. Oh, God. Smile Mob! <laughs> Is Friday the 13th Part 8 on your list, or did you uh, ask that? He, you know, hey, all right. Yeah, here's my bone to pick with James. Oh, here comes Nathan. Go he, he oh, does my question. James <laughs> doesn't, uh, he doesn't dabble much in the horror genre, and I'm like, I don't know if we could be friends anymore, sir. No, I just, it just, like, I remember going through that phase at school, like secondary school, where everybody was into like Nightmare on Elm Street 2 and 3 and stuff like that. Um, and the Hellraiser oh, movies had just come out. And I was just, I just couldn't get into the horror genre at all. Like Ghostbusters is probably the one, and let's be honest, it's, it, yes, it's a horror film, but it's, you know, like I said before, horror comedy. Whereas you get like certain films which are just horror. And I just didn't really take to horror films. And then you got with all the, um, uh, films like in the God, what the early noughties, a lot of the um, uh, like films like The Ring and The yeah. Grudge and all uh, this. And yeah, I was like, that was yeah, all those, yeah, PG 13 bullshit movies, <laughs> but just anything. I was just like, no, nah, not really. So I know, I know, like, the 80s was a great time for horror, of like, or you, you know, so not Jason. a Jason fan, no Friday the 13th, None no, no, not a Jason fan either. How about all right, you know what? I gotta go. <laughs> you see that in theaters? Second, Karate Kid Part 3, did you see that in theaters? No, I remember it being advertised. I remember us being in we my dad's friends. Um, oh, like, I guess it was, you know, Space Wagon. It's called in the 80s, Space Cruiser. And it was air conditioned. Whenever To this day, whenever I smell air conditioning, always transports me back. So the, being Canada 89, <laughs> driving along the highway, it's pissing down the rain. I remember on the radio, they were advertising, Karate Kid Part 3, and so it's probably Peter Cullen. Karate Kid Part 3 in cinemas. Yeah. He makes and everything like, sound cool. He makes, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just remember like that summer we watched all those. But yeah, Ghostbusters 2 was one of them. And I just, oh my God, one of the funniest things about them was, so I'm in Canada, it's 89. The first time I ever hear um, the Ninja Turtles theme song, by the way, as well. Because like we hadn't got the cartoon at that point. And I'd seen the comics, um, not the Archie Adventure, the uh, original Mirage Studios the Mirage, comics on, yeah. on, on shelves in the UK. But I didn't know, I just thought, as an independent black and white comic, not really my cup of tea, because I liked my Thor comics and my Hulk comics at the time. And I remember we went at Niagara Falls and my, my dad's uh, my dad's friend's son just was like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was like, what's that? And he's like, oh, it's this cartoon. I was like, oh, okay. So that was the first time I got into that. But I remember that holiday just buying, they still had some Transformers for selling toys. Russ, I got deluxe Insecticons because they weren't available in the UK. They never sold the deluxe Insecticons. So I got like um, Venom, God, Barrage and oh god, Chop Shop. I did. I couldn't find the other one whose name escapes me now. Um, but yeah, I remember like buying Transformers. I bought the Ghostbusters. The newest figures at the time were what fright features. It was the ones after that where you stick a ghost in like the chest and it spins around. Yes, uh, yeah, another one you're talking about. Because yeah. the Peter Venkman that I think came with that came with like an accurate movie gun or a cartoon gun. It looked like the one from the cartoon. I remember like, oh my god, he's actually got a decent looking gun. And I bought a Janine Melnitz as well. She had like a skirt. And yeah. her hair would run. Yeah. yeah. I could get up so, and go get those off the shelf because they are the only. I'm just missing the the ecto glow. Oh, figures. I remember that, those. Yeah, those are much lighter. That, those, I'm just. Can... They're really expensive now, but those are the only ones I'm missing. I got a complete collection on the shelf behind me. Yeah. The, 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 again, going. I don't know we haven't covered the cartoon yet, but I was never into. I bought the Peter Venkman figure the, from the first release, and then I bought the ones when I was in Canada. Those ones, but I never got into that toy line because. I just wanted, I always wanted those, there were certain things about it. Like one of the first things I did when I got the Peter Venkman figure was cut off the constant um, proton beam. I was like, with a pair of scissors. Because I was like, walking around with a proton beam constantly. It just Dang struck me as weird. Well, I, honestly, to be fair too, they were so fragile that a couple of mine yeah. broke. Well, mine didn't so, last anyway yeah. as a kid. They all ended up breaking up. But I, I, I mean, I was just, you know, I never, I never knew to twist them as a kid. I was just always like aiming at yeah, whatever so. goes. Yeah. yeah, I was just like, oh, they got him. I but think um, that that's uh, something that James had talked about. I, I think that's why Ghostbusters appeal to me the most is because 
you know, you look at Ninja Turtles, it's like obviously you're not a turtle and you're you're not living on like another planet somewhere fighting this seemed a little more even though it's ghost it seemed like a little more plausible as a kid plus they're they're actual people so well, it's like you can actually suit of, up and and go and bust yeah, that's that that at, at its core is what i always say is, is one of the best things about ghostbusters is that it's a very grounded movie yeah because i i always say about the the, the film itself it's something i'll talk about later but my favorite scene in the movie one of my favorite scenes in the movie is after the montage and it's peter and ray coming back to the firehouse you never looked like this no you know that that conversation yep and venkman's covered in slime they're smoking janine's like you know uh got for you know a few more goes for it whatever and winston's there just had the interview that seems great because that to me the, the biggest mistake that so many people have made over the years with writing ghostbusters is they're they're four paranormal uh ghostbusters they're heroes they're like superheroes it's like no they're janitors they are literally doing this job not because they want to i mean that's what again where the real ghostbusters was such a good cartoon there's one episode um oh my goodness oh it's the one with the giant pillar under um under new york how have i forgotten the name there uh beneath these streets there we go and um they come out of the sewer and they stink and uh and peter goes we're professionals, not vigilantes. People pay us to do this. Again, fucking cartoon for kids, right? And yet it's got dialogue like that. And Ray's like, I know, but wouldn't it be fun? <laughs> it's, it's that idea that it is their job. And obviously you've got Venkman, who's the cynic, and Egon is almost like from a science point of view. Ray is obviously, he would do it for free. That's always the beauty of that character. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I love that scene because what Nathan was saying, it's, it is by grounding it. It is kind of relatable. That's the funny thing that there's so much of that movie that is just day to day. Oh, da 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 da. Character doing this, doing that. Uh, but it happens to have this spec, uh, you know, this paranormal, spectral, whatever phenomenon going on. And yeah, the Marshmallow Man is a huge stretch of the imagination. But up until that point, they ground the movie so beautifully, and every moment of like Slimer or Library Ghost or this thing or that thing or Zool or Terror Dogs. The, when the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man comes, you're almost as resigned as Red. It's like, it's a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. You, you, you kind of go, no, I buy into this. And I remember in the cinema, everybody just like laughing, but not at the movie, just laughing because it's like, this is amazing. You know, it's that. Yeah. That's that. And it's always that thing about Ghostbusters is, you know, I, I tend to find it still makes me laugh as a movie, but I, I find myself more, you know, just entertained as a whole about movie. It's not like, oh, this is the funniest film I've ever seen ever. It's not, but it's, but the moments of comedy, I think, are so well done. And I think with Ghostbusters, uh, the, the the first movie is there's so much, like very under the surface comedy as well. So, I mean, they're they're brilliant what they do. Um, and what Nathan was talking about earlier about the work print is that. Um, on one of the recent Ghostbuster Blu-ray releases, it may have been very limited, they released the original work print of Ghostbusters. And what that is, is the full, like, you know, movie, but without special effects, but also alternate takes, a few scenes here and there. Um, and it's just amazing because you watch this movie and there's no ADR, so the scene where it's like, you know, you're always so concerned. Einstein did his best work, you know, best uh, thing working. He as was a patent, a patent clerk. Do you know how much a patent clerk earns? No. No. But but in but yeah, that no is so I love that. No. But they 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 use the audio in the work print from the take, so it's not ADR. So it's a very different. He's like, no, you know, it's it's all very different. There's all this. If you know the movie beat for beat, then you watch the work print, and you go, oh, and it's not a case of like Easter eggs or anything. Like, oh, I see that's different or that. You learn to appreciate the final cut even more of like, holy shit, that this would have been good enough. But they went, now oh, let's mix this. Like the montage scene is so different in the, in the work print, but also, and it's really key, the scene where the containment unit explodes, which is fantastic in the movie, yeah. that is so different in, in the work print. It's broken up across different scenes. And you're like, oh, this would have not been as, you know, with the, um, uh, the, the song, you know, 
magic. I believe it's magic. That yeah. that whole montage scene, uh, the, the ghost, you know. Th- that uh, shot of like of the ghost in paint oh. going over the skyline of New York. It's one of the coolest shots in the movie. It's amazing. It's, like, it's, it's amazing. Beautiful. They said, that, you know, I always thought that was a photo taken from um, Rockefeller Plaza. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the giant building, uh, the GE building. Yeah. Um, but they said, uh, I was listening to the DVD commentary the other week again, because I haven't listened to that in a long time. I was like, oh, and they said it, they took that photo from like a hotel that obviously was very high up and high rise. But um, yeah, you see that. And like you say, it's so well, you know, it's just so beautifully done. It's, because it's those, it's those um, you know, in camera, more traditional effects that we saw back then with films. You know, The Last Dragon. <laughs> One of the best things about that movie are the effects. It's don't, not don't CGI. Get, Tyler fucking it, hates that movie. That's the only yeah, thing I'll give the movie credit was the effect. I thought it looked nice. Other than that, I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get <laughs> it. And I love, I love Howard the Duck and Jaws four, but I'm like, I don't get why The Last Dragon. Is, I don't get it. You know, that's fair <laughs> enough. That's fair enough. It's just because yeah. you're not cool. Like, show up. You know, simple as that. <laughs> don't, don't I don't think Tyler right. will ever forgive us for making him have to watch that and then do an episode of Beyond Retro with the rest of us. Where we I had nothing about that. positive to say. I was like, to please. <laughs> I need to. Like, I need to. And I need Joe to was track like, oh man, yeah. Oh, he loved it. Like clearly a closet fan. Um, I need to go back and find this uh, episode of Beyond Retro. I need to see Tyler's pain. Or, or it was one of our last episodes. I think I was at my wits end. Like you know what? Enough of this shit. No one watches this show anyway. And and I was like, this podcast is over. I just flip over the table and walk out of the room. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't really do all that. Joe actually did that. Did do that one time when he was pissed <laughs> off at me. Oh man! I need to, yeah, I need to over, over down. Steven Seagal of all things, you know, no, <laughs> nothing, you know. That's a, that's not my really love with all of us, all that passion. But uh, but I, I will say, like, there's something, and and I, I always associate Ghostbusters with this too, because New York was used in so many movies I loved as a kid, and seeing yeah. shots of New York to me was just, it added such scope and scale to the story. And like I said, th- th- it was so important to see those shots of the ghost and various shots of the you know love uh, of the city. Even as they're approaching Dana's building, oh, that's sure. it's just, it just it's just like you're just I can't believe like all these ghosts are what and that all you see all what's uh, going down in the streets there too and it was just um or even that shot of when they see Stay Puff is coming and that yeah. music and, and uh, Elmer Bernstein's music's building and you're like oh my god oh my god you so know, even as a kid like you know yeah. you saw even at the first time you just get so giddy get, here he comes here he comes man and it's I mean, to see that used in Muppet Babies and referencing so, so yeah, many other... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in the so intro cool to Muppet too. Babies, you yeah. see the scene where Ray, it's, um, I think it's Fozzie or Ralph or someone fires a thing and it cuts the live action and the stream and hitting the thing. It was like, so James, cool. There is, there's only one thing in the movie that I remember as a kid and still now never liked. It was a particular ghost. I'm curious on your thoughts of it. You might even know where I'm going with this. Is that big, giant creature that comes through the archway and then goes... In part two? Or, I'm sorry, two. Oh, fuck, two, one. Well, either way, that big creature, what did you think of when that creature is going through the archway and it has just the most generic sound effect? I was like, really? You think this is the most imposing fucking thing? Look how big it is. And ah, like, shut well, up, remember, Joe. <laughs> no, but I remember, like, so for Ghostbusters 2, actually, that kind of takes me back, what, you know, I was on this holiday, so Ghostbusters 2 in Canada, and... I just felt a lot of the, like, you talk about that monster, for instance, that's a, a prime example of I, what I feel is there's so many kind of missed moments in that movie. And Like, when you like, think that would have been a creature that, man, he could have been a focus, he's gigantic, he's That's what I mean, monster. it's just yeah. like, a, it's like, it's a, it's a throwaway thing. Yeah, it's like, this yeah. thing's as, as threatening as the Stay Puft, and he's just like, rawr. Rawr. Like, that's like, um, yeah. And the, but, you believe this blasphemous <laughs> bullshit here, Nathan? <laughs> well, but, but, me for both of them here. I've got a. Um, I'll have to send you guys the image afterwards. But so big in, into Ghostbusters at the time, like I said, Ghostbusters Two is out. I'm in Canada. I'm buying the figures. I'm buying deluxe Insecticons. There was a um, a Ghostbusters Two coloring book, right? And I was like, ah, they had a yellow cover. You can find it probably on eBay or wherever. And I was like, I must have that because it's Ghostbusters Two. It came with like a pack of crayons. Got this. Thing. He says like the crayons was just like pack of crayons he's <laughs> <laughs> so dismissive like it wasn't colored pencils it was colored crayons you know yeah, just like, some like joe joe, had high, uh, joe joe james i'm getting james and joe confused here <laughs> like james had such high standards even back then like, and oh, i have oh, low man. standards so fuck about a <laughs> you'll take crayons you'll eat crayons <laughs> joe would eat crayons yeah I, can, I could see joe doing that yeah. there's, there's a challenge joe eats crayons um but yeah, the, so it came. This Ghostbusters two coloring book is one of the funniest things ever because they clearly 
did not have <laughs> they didn't have likeness rights. So you're not going to believe this, right? So in the book, <laughs> Ray has like a high top. That's not about Ray, big hair with a moustache. Venkman kind of looks Venkman-y, but not quite. Winston kind of looks like, well, it's just a generic black man is what they drew, but let's be honest. Of just course. Like, yeah. And they didn't even give him the tash. That he, doesn't he, yeah, he doesn't he sport, no, he sports the tash in the first one. He's clean yeah. shaved in the second. I was trying to get too confused. It's like, he looks younger in one of them, second one. And, um, and Egon doesn't even have glasses in this coloring book. But I remember like, my, me and um, my, my, my dad's friend's son just laughing our asses off this car. And was like, who's this supposed to be? And the, the caption's like, and then Ray said, it's like, this looks nothing like Ray. And then they had their name tags. It's like, how is that guy even Stance or Zedmore or Spangler or Venkman? It's ridiculous. I, you I, still I, have I, that? I've never seen a I've got I've got an image shown to my computer. When we come off, I'll, I'll send it over if I can. I'm kind yeah, of, I got to see that. Yeah. It's so bad. It's so, so bad. Um, and hilarious, though. But... Um, yeah, going back to um, like just Ghostbusters in general, so when the film comes out. Um, so then the next thing, obviously, like to cover, I guess, is the cartoon. But my first experience with that was going into our local video rental store, and you know, all the cartoons at the bottom. They have like all the Rockies and other films up top, and going for all these cartoons, and I saw Ghostbusters on the spine. I was like, ooh, picked up. I was like, ah, and it was like two guys and a gorilla. I was like. Look at over the back as a nah. I just What's the live knew, action we're talking. Is it the cartoon or the live this, action? This is Filmation's cartoon. Okay. So the cartoon had come out of it. Because bear in mind, the cartoon was never shown on UK TV. The the Filmation Ghostbusters. Oh, I can't think why. <laughs> Should we air this? You know, so the Filmation Ghostbusters was was never out of the UK. It just they released four episodes on video. Eventually, it made it to cable TV, but on terrestrial, never shown. So. I remember looking at the video package and thinking, oh, this is horrible. I'm just putting it down, thinking nothing of it. And I'll never forget my dad, um, maybe like months later, I was um, I playing with toys or drawing or something. And my dad came into the room and said, hey, he goes, um, I just saw an advert for a Ghostbusters cartoon. I'll never forget just saying to him, oh, that's the one with the, um, the, 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 the gorilla. I said, I'm not interested in it. He said, no, no, this, this looked like the movie. So my dad saw the trailer of the cartoon before I did. I was like, what? And then like later that day, I sat down. They showed the trailer, which was like just the original intro. This wasn't the pilot, you know, that, that America got. This was the, the uh, just the introduction footage. And I was like, oh my god, there's. I'll never forget the first shot I saw. Winston, you know, about to be the burger, runs off and Slimer. And I was like, oh. and I remember like, oh my god, this is this is Ghostbusters. And then it comes up the real Ghostbusters. And um. Yeah, absolutely love that cartoon. It was, and that was the cartoon that I would say, you know, I, I'm sure it was very similar in America as well. He Man, uh, Transformers, Mask, Real Ghostbusters, Ninja Turtles. Those were your kind of key moments in 80s pop culture, especially you know, kid culture, as it were. And I remember just, just loving that cartoon. I remember it was heavily, so heavily promoted. Marvel UK came out with the Ghostbusters comic that ran for God, hundred and Something issues, 198 or something crazy. God, you guys get so much cool shit. I envy you. Marvel, Marvel UK was such a great co comics company. Not to go into a whole Marvel UK thing, but and even like Marvel UK was in some way associated with um, the company. I think a Adam Cross will correct me. I'm, I'm sure like Marvel UK were in some way associated with um, Fleetway that ended up doing the He Man, Marvel the UK comic. Did you guys um, get any thought, annuals like you did for He-Man and Dungeons and Dragons and all that? Oh stuff yeah, we had real, real Ghostbusters had about four or five annuals. Yeah, you real Ghostbusters annuals was, too. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was real Ghostbusters annuals. Like they, the first one was an all blue cover, and the four of them are like looking. You own anything. any? Not anymore. Like this was dec decades. Yeah, it was decades ago. I have these. Um, and plus, I could really pick them up on eBay. You had, you had all those Marvel grand grand dreams were also you know part of Marvel. They produced the Master Universe annual. Um, yeah, Mask, Transformers, Thundercats, eventually Ninja Hero, Turtles. 
<laughs> but um, yeah, they went to all these different shows. Um, I just didn't know how pricey they might be because I know some of the he man ones. I know you can like you can still buy them quite dirt cheap on eBay. I'm sure. Like I mean, shipping may be a bit of a bitch, but oh. primarily the, those are still I think relatively affordable. I found um, an image from that coloring book. It's been on the screen now for a couple minutes. Oh, I, Tyler, oh, I, I put it in our our group if you want to look at it. It's <laughs> terrible. I'm going to make it bigger now. It's awful. Oh, is my the, God. Is it the three shot of them? No, the one it's guy all, all the four. It looks like, like Dustin from uh, Stranger Things. He yes, those... he does. That's the one. <laughs> I just no, can't get over see... the mustache on Ray. Mustache yeah. Look at this it looks shit. like Tom Selleck. <laughs> but that was the ghost. Was you can't even tell that, that that's supposed <laughs> to be Winston. That is, the, that is the shittiest interpretation of what, what they think a black man should look like. <laughs> and I know what Nathan wants to do. Nathan probably wants to color it in and put it on a t-shirt. Oh, like, dude, please. Stuff. That would I be will. awesome. Send me the image. I'll do it. <laughs> the funniest thing about that Ghostbusters is that oh, color book, it? That color Sorry, book is so thick as well. It's huge. It was like a proper thick color book, like 100 or so pages. Of just really? utter garbage. <laughs> now, I'm curious, hey, Joe. If you do this, like, are you uh -huh. going to color it by the 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 cartoon, like like the cartoon colors, like you know? Oh my whatever God, you like... guys prefer, I will fucking do whatever you guys want. This is hilarious. Just send me the image. I'll color that shit and do some stuff tonight. Holy fuck! Yeah, yeah. If you, if you color it as as like the real Ghostbusters color scheme, <laughs> like okay. get give. Oh my God! Like I'm looking at these and like giving. Well, here's another one. That's kind of scary. God, that's so shitty. I'm gonna, I'm gonna post this one in our little group chat too. It's, I'm like, <laughs> Plus, dude, it looks like Ray has the longest arm in the world. <laughs> yeah, well, check so that. Bad. out. Check that out. It does look like funny because oh my god, oh, arms, oh, oh like, this is like... the fast one. They dance at the kids' birthday party. You got to put in He Man. He Man. Actually, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna that's put this on the screen for everybody. Doing else the too. old soft shoe. Is that what they do in the UK, James? What's that? <laughs> is that, is that like so I'm looking at the pictures. <laughs> the uh, yeah, it, that's the name of a dancer doing the old soft shoe. Oh the God. old soft shoe. That's that's great. I just oh, like geez. the Joe face on Ray. He, the he, this is what Ray looks like. He's like, God, and he's rubbing got... Winston's belly. <laughs> I'm so glad we were able to, like, able to found that coloring book. It's God, so they, bad. They, they did the birthday cake better than this shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. God. So there you go. I've exposed you to the um, the legend. Maybe that's part of the reason I don't like Ghostbusters too. Because it had <laughs> these the colors. God, oh, that's so unfair, man. <laughs> this, uh, the worst coloring book ever. Well, I'm not going to argue that, but <laughs> damn it, man! Like, you can't you can't associate this shit with that that gorgeous movie, though. I, just, I, I mean, come I, on. One, one thing about um, when the cards, the real Ghostbusters cartoon first aired. So I was like, you know, I knew it was I knew it was coming on the Monday. That it was heavily advertised. So. So put a new cassette tape in, play and record, just couldn't. starts recording. Yes. First episode they showed was Slimer Come Home, which is one of the worst looking animated episodes from that initial season. Um, and it was, but it was still the real Ghostbusters cartoon. I really wanted to, to record all the episodes. So I start recording, episode ends, stop, rewind. I want to see the intro again because that was amazing. Yeah. Press play, start playing. I, instead of taping, Channel three, I taped channel one because I had set the Aww. thing on the. Do you remember that on video recorders? We had to, you had to specify the channel. I was like, oh my goodness, I'd recorded droids, which Doosan will probably oh. be like, what a, what a great cartoon. I'm like, shut up, Doosan, I didn't like droids. I wanted to tape Ghostbusters. <laughs> and luckily, the following week, um, they aired Night Game, which is one of, one of my all time favorite episodes. And I actually recorded that episode. I finally did it. So I, was like, I, I pressed the right buttons on the machine. But um, yeah, Real Ghostbusters. So it was huge in the UK. It was it was so popular. I was in um, uh, how old have I been at the time? Like ten, I guess, when it came out. Ten, eleven. And at school, um, we were given a project to do. Very much this is like junior school, so before secondary school. And um, we were given a um, a project. It was like a week long project. And they divided up into groups of four. The class. It's probably about like I don't know, six or seven groups, and. Um, the project was the human body, and it was like you know, it's all about you, you have to create a, a do an assignment. It's like oh, you know, create a, a project all about human body, blah, blah blah, you know, this kind of stuff. And so I'll never forget me and this kid Benjamin Keep, who yeah, I, I don't so know proper. him anymore. What's that? His name it just sounds so proper. Benjamin, Benjamin Keep. Keep. 
Ben Keep. And um, oh, ben he, ben Keep. He, he and I were just talking about like ideas. And we were all like, so we're all big fans of real Ghostbusters. And I said, I said, oh, it'd be funny if like me, you, who are the other two? Me, Ben Keep, James Norton, and is that the guy? Was it Andreas Hadjusavis? I forget. Anyway, I can probably tell by looking at this book that I illustrated. Um, and we came up with the idea of like, oh, imagine if instead of busting ghosts, we could bust germs. We could be the germ busters. And I did this Holy whole shit, project. I'm not the only lunatic here, huh? This is fucking this is, So Joe reminded me of this because he came out with his cone busters early. Like I said, we had this conversation about an hour before we went live. Joe said cone busters. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't even I – I've looked at these books in – they've been in this box for God knows how many years. But this, this – Oh, we got to see this. 12 issues. And this is from, night, like I say, uh, November 1988. You are gonna, the worst thing is the illustrations were done mainly on – God – so it's a scrapbook, so the pages are really dark, but I drew in blue by a row, so literally you can't see anything. So this was my Germ Busters book. Look, don't you, can you see it all right? Uh, Look, Germ Busters. No. I've got stickers from the UK sticker album. Okay. Little glowy thing there. Oh, cool. The I see that, yeah. This one should be in proper colour. Oh, no, where oh, are we? Shit. There we go. The all new Germ Busters. There we go. And there was like eight of us. It's Mr. Stay Puff, so God knows how he got in there. Who drew that up? You drew that? <laughs> I drew that, yeah. That was my... That's looking great. It look, looks okay. quite good. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was relatively... <laughs> these are brilliant. These won't be able to be picked up. What these are... I, I candy wrappers? Are those candy wrappers that are no, foiled? No, they're the bits of foil. Only Joe would... Yeah. would. <laughs> the bits of foil, and I drew on the backs of them with the character name. So I had to write everyone's name in reverse. Oh. Did a pretty good job. And then so, they they would, the so these little things, these actually protrude, these foil protrude from the page. That's but cool. um, yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to see, like, let me have a look. Fuck, any... you should scan this shit look, up. Look at this. Do a little print of it. Spot the difference. <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> like, everything's different. James, this is fucking genius. I'm look, telling word, you. Word search. Scan that shit in. Search. Make a little booklet, man. I'd love to fucking have a little print of that. That's so fucking cool. It's so it's funny, like, book, looking huh? at some of these drawings, I can see, like, you know, I was a huge fan of Jack Kirby as a kid. This drawing of um, the Venkman character, who I was Venkman, obviously, James Etog. Um, I'd given him, like, Jack Kirby fingers, and if you see it. Scoot it over like... to the, would be your left, I guess. Yeah, there that you one? go. But I, I came up with, like, all these different things i like that you <laughs> turned it into like an activity book that's pretty yeah cool. this one's like find which proton gun leads to the <laughs> you know that shit <laughs> yep it's just like the games we played in every book i like that i like that um i even did how to draw an all new germ buster <laughs> <laughs> we'll oh, this, this was really cool so i even did like oh god is my, you can tell i like my crave brain as a kid was like really working overtime so here i don't know if i can see it really um, this is an advert for Germ Busters the movie, which I quote has better animation, the greatest challenge of all time. And it's like a, a character on top of a building with lightning, and it's yeah, me yeah, and James Norton. Yeah, perspective looking up. Yeah, yeah, we're like looking up, like, oh no, there's something that's, going on on the building. It's really fucking good, man. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did like twelve issues of this. Um, I did like. You can tell how, like. This is the first first monthly issue of the Germ Busters. There are lots more issues on on this comic. Next month has three stories of terror. Oh, apparently so. Wait till you read them. They are in brackets real good. Um, <laughs> checklist. <laughs> These are the other comics I was apparently doing. Popeye and Son. These comics okay. never got published. Mask. And um, He Man and Friends. <laughs> what? <laughs> He-Man and Friends. <laughs> like a more light and fluffy version of He-Man, sounds like. Did you see He-Man and Friends there? <laughs> That's great. I'm sorry. He-Man and Friends. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, and that, that and could be like, like the knockoff coloring book, like the Ghostbusters oh, one. He-Man yeah. oh, and Friends. Man. That's really so cool, funny. Like, I've, I've got 12 of those things. I, I should, those like, those, I should, I should awesome. scan them and kind of knock out the... The dark, so I can ex you can you can see the illustrations better. Oh yeah, but, that'd be um, awesome. Yeah, man. after a while, like I got bored of like I guess when real Ghostbusters died down, I, I went back into reading comics. So then the story became James Eater. I was like, you can tell I had a massive ego back then. James Eater went from being the leader of the real Ghostbusters to becoming the mighty Thor. 
don't ask me how. <laughs> And then one of the other real Ghostbusters turned out to be He-Man. And it was He-Man and Thor. We would go on missions together. So <laughs> even back then, I was toying with copyright. <laughs> and because the universe like, can we retroactively sue him? <laughs> I'm sure we can. Um, I buy James E. Talk's childhood stories. You can fucking label those things. Dude, put out all I know, those I, I need to. I need to do more with those. Cause like I said, they're just sitting in a box. I've got like loads of old illustration work from... Yeah, the uh, like late eighties primarily, uh, all the nineties are covered. But um, yeah, so and uh, like yeah, just going back to Ghostbusters, I guess. So yeah, the movie happened, the cartoon happened. I love the cartoon so much, and it's so funny how the you know the second movie was clearly influenced by the cartoon, with like Slimer becoming the official name, him becoming like the ghost, and obviously there's the deleted scenes with Slimer in the firehouse and Lewis yep. constantly chasing him. Um, a lot of that stuff obviously got deleted, but uh, yeah, it was. I just felt really somewhat let down by the second film. Um, I mean, by that point, the cartoon had become a bit of a parody of itself with the, you know, when, when Slimer Swans, and the real ghost. Yeah. The, the, the funniest thing about that is like, you know, I would say you had the, you know, in terms of the real ghost, we had the season one, which was on CBS, no ABC, ABC. ABC. So, Real Ghostbusters airs on ABC. Then you get the syndicated season, which takes up to 78 episodes. And that's when Straczynski had the reins. Because before it was uh, Len Jansen and Chuck Menville, they did the, you know, Straczynski worked on that series, but that was their show. Syndicated show had less, to, uh, had less people to answer to. So, you know, they had all these ex-Star Trek writers, sci-fi writers, um, comic book writers all come on and write this, you know, Richard Mueller who'd done the original, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, paperback of the, 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 I guess the movie adaption ad adaptation, you know, of the, of the script. And he was the one that introduced, you know, uh, aunt Lois and Peter's father into the, you know, into the law. And then he brought them into the cartoon. Cause they were introduced in this, in this paperback book. And, um, you know, you had all these amazing writers, and that syndicated season, like I've said to you before, and I've said I've done this podcast before, I, um, He Man and She Ra, my favorite shows all the time. Of course they are. But I still think that syndicated season, the syndicated season of Real Ghostbusters, is the best written cartoon of the 80s. I don't think it's my, it's not my favorite cartoon of the 80s, but it, I still think it's the best the cartoon. Is the highest, yeah. Oh, it's, it's just ridiculous. Like the, 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 the jokes and the, the, the level of humor that there's, you know, you read Straczynski's series Bible for that syndicated season, and it's it's a fucking work of art because he basically says, "Here's the stories we can't have: characters shrink, you know, someone's birthday's forgotten because they'd already done it in Slimer Come Home. All these different tropes of Saturday morning cartoon animation, which I totally understand. Straczynski was like, "We don't want to do that. Watch the movie, and then start sending me spec scripts." And I love that. It was just they they just they wanted to write a cartoon. And, you know, no one's every like from He-Man to She-Ra to Thundercats to Transformers, Ninja Turtles, all these writers are still writing for themselves. People are always writing for kids. It's like they're talented writers that write, you know, and they're, they're obviously, yes, kids are their target audience, but they're also writing. If you've got any sense, you're always writing for that kind of early teen audience, which I think a lot of these shows do. But Real Ghostbusters was is something you can watch as an adult. And I always say it's like, it's almost like the best radio show. You could listen to the Real Ghostbusters and its dialogue is so perfect because those yeah. characters were so wonderfully known. I remember reading Sank Straczynski wrote an art article once. And he said, it's one of the easiest things to write the Ghostbusters because they were so perfectly represented in that movie. It's like you, you knew almost immediately who each one was and I, that again going back to the movie how, how good it was like venkman is you know the the moment they decide to turn ghostbusters into a business you see who each of those them is you know it's like venkman is the opportunist you can make money out of this you know um the, the, he's the cynic um ray is just i just want to bust ghosts you know that's what i do spengler is because he's so intre interested in the science of it all and then Winston comes on board. And the best thing about Winston is he's the guy that goes, what? You know, I have seen shit that will turn you white. That, that. And a lot of his dialogue is so, you know, Winston, there was, oh, it's not on the poster. And it's like, yeah, but he's not, he's not one of the three main stars. You understand that. These guys were, 
you know, stars. Although, in fairness, in, in a lot of the later DVD releases and stuff, in Ghostbusters 2, Winston is prominently featured. But in Ghostbusters, the movie poster, it's like, here's Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, and Bill Murray. You know, you could make an argument that Sigourney Weaver should be on there as well, given she'd been an alien already. I was going to say, if John Candy had stayed on as Lois, like, you know, it makes me wonder if, if John Candy would have worked his way on the movie poster. That's, a, that that's a very good point. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> in these days of modern movie posters, imagine the Ghostbusters. It'd be like this Ghostbusters with all the different heads. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. With it looked terrible. Colors. And like, then Eddie Murphy was supposed to be in, yeah, in it as well. Eddie Murphy, so. yeah, yeah. It's, I, it's, it's, it's really, it's the Ghostbusters production is is as fascinating as what the the movie became but yeah the the cartoon that syndicate season did such a good job and then it obviously they realized and i get why they made the decision that slimer was you know um quite a popular character so then they decided well let's name it slimer the real ghostbusters and i remember i still remember the first time i saw that because it was it was on a saturday morning show they were showing that i remember just like ah and frank that was Walker, my reaction too yeah, Frank Welker went from doing that, blah, 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 and now he's like, blah, 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 and he's doing all that, and you're like, oh no, now he's he's articulating, like he's not, he's he's saying sentences that we can understand. I love Welker, but it was just like, ah, uh. the funny thing was, years, I never watched the 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 specific Slimer cartoon because they did the that Slimer. that that was because I was, I don't know how it played there, but I know for us they would play that, and then you would have an actual yeah, just, ghost. Okay. That's yeah, in America, yeah. not in England. Like in England, we we never got the Slimer cards, and we got Slimer no, in the real Ghostbusters. But I so when my my first exposure to the Slimer cartoon was in two thousand and eight. So this is when I I go to so jumping forward a little bit. Yeah, cartoon happens, internet happens, um, BCI He Man DVDs happen, He Man Shira DVDs. All those BCI DVDs are worked on. So, you know, Dungeon Dragons, blah 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 blah. And Andy Mangles was like the producer on, I think, many, if not all of those. And when it, he got the, the gig to do Time Life's Real Ghostbusters. So Andy Mangles emails me and says, hey, I've, I've been, you know, approached to do a Real Ghostbusters box set for Time Life. Would, do you want to work on this? And I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. I said, I love that show. He's like, here's what I'll need. I was like, okay, great. So I start kind of, you know, putting stuff together because we had to, we had to break down stuff like, for those that don't know, when they when they create the Slimer of the Real Ghostbusters cartoon, I, it's it's a pivotal no pivotal moment. It's a moment when the show, uh, not I don't want to say jumps the shark because it hasn't done. It's just it's the moment the show declines in quality. There are the odd moments like that, but primarily it's on a down trajectory because Laura Summer, the voice of Janine, is replaced with Cass Suse. Janine's look is motherly, as they said in the design, make her look less like a whore. Nice. Um, that's actually, it's in the, I've got the illustration where they actually write that, and it's just like, oh my, you know, make her look less angular. Um, so they, 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 they make Janine look more like a, a motherly figure. Um, Dave Coulier comes in to oh, replace God, them, I yeah. hated that. As which was one I of the worst. I still hate it to this day. Oh, my I, God. I, can't, I can barely watch those. Hey, Spud. I can't it's, watch those. But the funny I, I thing won't. about that is, <laughs> I, remember read, I remember reading an interview with Dave Coulier, and he said that he based that voice of Peter, Ven or Bill Murray, Peter Venkman, on Murray's character in Caddyshack. And it's like, why? Yeah. You know, because in Caddyshack, he's that kind of guy. And it, he's doing that voice, and it's like, no, like try and do Lorenzo music. So, and obviously, Fuck you, shortly Dave after that, Coulier. yeah, I'll second and, that. And then, and then a few, like maybe 10, 15, 20 episodes later, Arsenio Hall left because obviously his career started to take off. And uh, Buster Jones, Buster Jones does a really good Winston, I think. I could, I could live with, I mean, Arsenio Hall's Winston is so good, but I could live with the Buster Jones Winston, and obviously. Welker sticks around, and so does Maurice LaMarche as, as as Ray and Egon, respectively. But when they took away Lorenzo Music and Laura Summer, it's such a jarring thing because, you know, yes, yeah, it's, it's just weird. It's just so, so weird that they, that they they made that change. And, like, the whole show becomes less clever. That's the best way to put it. And it's and obviously that's the day. What they have was they they go from syndication, then seasons. So season one syndicated, two, three, four, five, six, and what was seven? I think seven or six were all the they were all um, 
uh, not syndicated. They were on, on network, network shows. So then you have to run, you have to look what you're, you know, you have to be careful of what you're doing and stuff. Um, and yeah, I just, I just, I always check out. Like if you ask me to watch Real Ghostbusters or what are your favorite episodes, I'm going to say stuff from either the first 13 or the syndicated. I rarely go beyond that. But um, so, yeah, going back to the DVD. So go to like Andy Mangle says, so we're going to do all the filming out in Los Angeles. And we're going to film at um, Tom Tatter and Alex's, uh Gang of Seven Animation Studio. I was like, oh, how cool. Because I'd, I'd met Tom T a few years prior to that. Um, and yeah, and Andy's like, do you want to come out and help with the interviews? I was like, oh, my God, yes. So I fly out to America in 2000. It was like June or July of 2008. It was ridiculous. I've been to Los Angeles a few times at that point, but this was July and it was scorching. It was so, so bloody hot. And we basically interviewed as many people as we could. We couldn't get, you know, Frank Walker didn't want to be interviewed. Um, we got Laura Sutler, obviously Arsenio Hall, you couldn't get. But we got um, Maurice LaMarche. Like the first night of filming, like Maurice LaMarche walks in. I was like, oh my God. And then... Um, Laura Summer, the voice of Janine, walks in. We got to meet those, and they were just so lovely. Just, like, two of the loveliest. But to this day, like, every once in a while, I'll send Maurice LaMarche, like, when I do my Christmas cards, I'll send one to him. He always responds. Or every, every once in a while, like, he sent me a message once, and he was just like, I just want to say, like, I had a flashback to that. It was just so, so much fun working with you. And I was like, thank you, voice of the brain. And I was going to ask you, like, when he talks to you, because I've seen, like, you know, the, the, there's there's clips of him and Frank like doing behind the scenes work on on Ghostbusters, yeah. and it just that, that's his voice. Like, so when you're when he's talking to you, are you like, I'm talking to Egon, like literally? I'm oh talking yeah, because that's one of the things I said to him. I said one of my my friend's favorite lines from the show, my friend Ahmed at school, he would always like every once in a while he would he would like joke and we'd talk about that. He'd I'm like, what are we gonna do about this? This is at school, and Ahmed would go, oh, we could always reverse the, was it reverse the? Oh, I've forgotten the bloody line now. We could reverse the pro, not pro zombies. Oh my god, I forgot the line. Anyway, whatever it was, oh, I forgot that line. Uh, uh, it just happens. Oh wait, wait, you're quoting the movie. We aren't sure. Wait, 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 wait. Um, reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. I, I was going to say the polarity. Yeah, it's re, if we reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. My friend would always say that jokingly, so I said that to him. I was, I was one of my friends' favorite lines, and he just busts out that line. I'm like, oh my god, and he's such a lovely guy. But Laura Summer was the, she was just so lovely, like. She still, we still chat to this day. It's not like, you know, it's not like me, a fan, going, oh, Laura. She messages me and just says, like, oh, hey, you know, I'm coming over to London or whatever. And it's just like, oh, my God, Laura Summer. And um, and she's just such a legend. And I had coffee with her many, well, quite a few years ago now in Los Angeles. Just, yeah, just so, so lovely. And when I announced my YouTube channel, she messaged me and she was like, if there's anything I could do to help, let me know. Oh, so, that's awesome. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, of, course I'm gonna, of course I'm going to. James is, like, such a damn jet setter. Like, he just has I, to, to speak, and people are just I know. As soon as <laughs> he not. launches that channel, he's already going to have more subscribers than... than oh, no, don't say that. We don't know. Like, oh, it's, like dude, said, oh, oh, come bullshit. on. Yeah, it's going to do good. But it's a humble <laughs> bullshit, man. He's trying to be all humble. We we, we know how it is. I, we, I'm, I'm when this is all over, James put, puts on his sunglasses like two o'clock in the morning. He's going to go out. <laughs> he, wears, he wears sunglasses at night. He's, he's like, I'm like the, Tom Cruise in Risky Business. I'm yeah, like, he's like snapping his face. Like, ah, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, I like I was having a stroke though. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that's me being cool. Yeah, put that um, in a, put that in a shirt, Joe. <laughs> James with a shirt. <laughs> But uh, yes, yeah, so, so, you got all the different strokes. Different strokes. Oh my god, it's amazing. <laughs> the face you made it made it look like. Remember, Amber heard of that dumb shit. My dog stepped on a bee, and that stupid fucking face. <laughs> 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 oh god, it's amazing. Oh, excuse me. Um, yes, so going back to the the time life box set. So yeah, all these people came and went. Like, got to James me. doing his stroke face. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I'm gonna go turn my light on. Face pops up. Since it's getting all dark in here. <laughs> James, yeah, it's a mild, it's like a mild stroke for James. Like it's a mild <laughs> thing. Oh God, you make me get a smoker's cough. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, oh, God, it's too hot. Um, yes, uh, going back to the uh, the box set. So yeah, obviously, first night met. Maurice LaMarche, Laura Summer, I think Michael Swanigan, uh, He-Man storyboard artist, that storyboard artist of Ghostbusters, many shows came in. Um, uh, it was so weird to be in that studio because you had Tom Tatter and Hours and his, they were doing a Santa Claus cartoon at the time. And in the studio, loads of ex-filmation people. So you had Don Manuel was there. 
Bob oh, cool. Klein was there. I got to meet Bob Klein in the in the kitchen. Just like you're Bob Klein. He's like, yeah. I was like, oh my god, I love your artwork. That's where I do geek out. Like, I love your artwork. I, like, I love your artwork. It's so and Joe, like, James takes his panties off and throws them like he's a Beatles fan or something. Yeah, like, like that. Ah. The scary thing is Bob Klein's like, oh. I was like oh. <laughs> it was. But he was such a lovely. A lot of these guys just are. Um, got to Bob meet, was Don Manuel well, like. Yeah. What was, was he was, like? Who, sorry? Don Manuel. What was he like? He's a, he's a very quiet guy. It's quite funny. When you talk to him about him, and he's like, yeah, it was good. You know, and um, <laughs> when uh, when he came, he came to PowerCon one year, and uh, I think I said to him, like, oh, I'd love to, um, like, touch base and interview. And he's like, oh, I don't really do that kind of thing. And I was like, oh, OK. But I'm sure I'm sure if I reached out to him with a bit more effort, but it's just like, ah, you know, some of these guys are just like, oh, I did that. You know, it's not. It's not always just the job, but it's like that was, you know, uh, 30 years ago or 40 yeah. years ago, let's be honest. And with um, uh, the most disappointment was always Bob Ford, Bob Ford, writer of The Problem with Power, Price of Freedom, Sweet Bee's Home, etc., etc. I emailed him in 97. So this is just 10, 11 years after He Man and she has ended. And I emailed him and I said, hey, I said, you're Bob Ford. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was chatting about Beast Wars and stuff. And I said to him, um, I said, oh, I'd love to speak to you about He Man Shearing. He's like, oh, that was, he goes, that was so long ago. Like, I can't remember anything about that. And I was like, and thinking back to it now, so like, that was literally like 11 years ago yeah. that he was saying, oh, it's so long ago. Whereas, whereas Larry Dottilio was like, oh, you want me to talk about He Man and Shearer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rob Lamb God. was like, oh, funny enough, that was the best thing I ever worked on. <laughs> you know, these guys that have that passion, but you get, you know, your Bob Fords and, and sometimes your Don Manuels are just like, ah, eh, you know, I don't really have much to say about it, which is fair enough. But um, but most of the people they got in for the Time Life DVDs had so much to say. But it's so weird when you look back, like um, the producers on the original live action movie were involved in the cartoon. So I met um, Michael Gross and Joe Medchuk. And it's so weird that I met those. I'm like, they were producers of Ghostbusters. <clears throat> when I met them, I knew who they were, but I, I didn't. I knew they were, but I didn't appreciate who I was met. It sounds weird just because they were like, oh, nice to meet you. Like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be interviewing you or like making notes or whatever. And it was it was so unique. And obviously, um, yeah, I met so many. Richard Mueller was one. He's an amazing writer. Um, for, he worked on like Venkman's Ghost Repellers. Um, Michael Michael Reeves couldn't because he's, he's unfortunately he was struck down with Parkinson's in the early noughties, so he was un unavailable, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, no, many, many people came in. Matt Straczynski, that's a story in itself, but Matt Straczynski, um, super, you know, amazing talent. That's, that's what I'll say about him, an ama amazing, talented man. Um, but, yeah, it was just incredible. Like, at one point, you know, Andy Mangles wasn't feeling well, so... Um, he was like, do you mind taking over for the evening? Um, and this was the evening where, that was incredible. So we're sitting in the green room. <laughs> the green room was the kitchen at Gang of Seven Animation. And Kevin Altieri walks in. I'm talking to Dan Reba. Now, if you know those names, like Kevin Altieri, Dan Reba, Watson, Real Ghostbusters. But they also, Kevin Altieri was, you know, and Dan Reba are more known for Batman the Animated Series. They directed a lot of shows there on, on the series. I went to Dan Reeve, and Dan Reeve was like, you know, really sweet, sweetheart of a guy. Kevin Altieri walks in, looking like something out of Miami Vice. Really cool guy, but like in a suit, sunglasses, hair like swept back. I was just like, who's this dude? Because I've never met, seen, you know, still 2008. You don't know what everybody looks like, on, you know, in this world of animation. And he's like, I'm Kevin Altieri. I was like, all oh, right. And he's got this huge um, brown kind of uh, not a wallet, like folder, but like a leather folder. It's, it's, it's like probably about like about about this big. It's got this huge leather fold, uh, and and it's like, and he puts it on the desk. He's like, I don't know if any of this will interest you. I'm like, oh, what is it? He's like, well, you know, I was one of the first people to work on Real Ghostbusters. He said, uh, I think it was Richard Rainis, maybe at Deke, came in and said, guys, you know, we're pitching for a Ghostbusters cartoon. Go. I'm like, what? It sounds amazing. Imagine being like, and they were all fans of the movie because let's be honest, who'd seen it at that time wasn't a fan of the movie. So it's 1980, I guess, four maybe. Seen the movie, got, got, they're at Deke. Right. Okay. So they literally sit there and Kevin Altieri does this first sketch of the real Ghostbusters and obviously movie likenesses, but very kind of caricature. 
And he pulls that out of this folder. I was like, oh my God. He's like, yeah, it's the first real Ghostbusters sketch. And it's, and it's this little baby. It's such a great illustration. It's very rough, but you can see how it would have looked. And it's this little baby ghost holding like a teddy bear. And it's got his, he's facing, he's, his back's to the camera. So it's a low angle. So you've got the, the child goes like here. And then you've got the four Ghostbusters all looking at this child with the guns like this, <laughs> like about to bust it. But then you've got, I think it's Winston turning around, tapping on the back of like Egon. And there's a giant, like, they didn't draw at the time. There was going to be like a giant, like, father ghost hanging over them. And that was going to be the promotional poster. What they did instead was the the now famous image that is on Tyler's shirt. Which oh, yeah. Is, yeah, that's that the there. image they did instead. Because they said, uh, the people at Deke were like, look, if we're going to promote this, we need to we need to have, like, the green guy, as they called him, the green guy on there, and, and the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. So they did that. And I think it was Kevin Altieri, uh... Oh my god, G Gabe! Oh my god, who was the? I'm trying to remember the lead uh, character designer. Oh, do send will remember in the comments if he's there. Do send if you're there. Well, who's the lead character designer for Real Ghostbusters? Begins with a G. Oh, Gabby Payne. There we go, Gabby Payne. Gabby Payne did it, and they. I forget who was the actual final painter on it, but that was that that illustration that's on Tyler's chest. On, on his on his chest. It's like he's got a tattoo on his shirt, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, and then the next thing they did was the storyboards. And then, you know, again, he reaches into this brown folder, pulls out the story. I was like, oh, my God. He's like, yeah, these are the storyboards for the pilot. I was like, oh. I was like that's the three and a half minute pilot. He's like, yeah. I was like, oh, my God. I said, the only time I'd ever seen that, I should have jumped back a little bit, but school, secondary school, Ghostbusters is still quite big. This is like 89, 90. Ghostbusters is still quite big. They released in the UK these little, you know, like viewfinders, mm -hmm. pictures, they released these little, they were called mini movies. And when you put a battery in, it was little, almost like a rectangle object. You slot a little film reel in the back. And it's just like, and it's silent. And you just watch it. You hold it up to the light, press it, and you're watching a little film reel. The weirdest thing about it was they released, they released DuckTales, Ninjas, all these different cartoons. They had two reels of real Ghostbusters. We're at school watching them, and we're all going, why are they all wearing tan suits? They all look like they're movie characters. So we couldn't figure out what we were looking at. And then in the late 90s, the internet happens and people are going, oh, I've got I've got this four seconds from a pie, like from the Ghostbuster pie. And that you could only ever get little bits of it. Just like, oh, I want to see this full thing. And Kevin Altier was like, yeah, here's the storyboards. I was like, oh my God, so one day I'd, I'd love to see that. And he's like, I've got it on video as well. I was like, oh. I was like you've, got the, you've got the promo on video. He's like, yes. Yeah. So he goes, it's the only copy. I go, oh, he goes, I don't think it's ever been we got it transferred and this played at deep, but he goes, this was shown to, you know, the execs and all that, but he goes, this is, um, yeah, this is the praise. Like, do you want it? I was like, yes, please. <laughs> I go back to the hotel that night. And God I almighty. Yeah, I, I got, I, this is how geeked out I was on this. I took photos of this, which I, I think I linked to you guys in a Facebook thing. And I've got a Facebook album and I literally ho took a photo of myself holding it, you know, he's me with the tape. And then I pop it in and I watch this pilot and I, I've been wanting to see this pilot for like technically about 20 something years. I've watched it and, and anybody who's seen that pilot, it's fantastic because Kevin Altieri said like we literally sat there, it was him and um, Eddie Fitzgerald was another storyboard artist. They said they literally sat there and go, right, we know the movie, now we've got to turn it into like a, um, a three and a half minute trailer for a cartoon. Okay, so we do this, we do that. We'll have the ghost walking down the street. And a lot of this stuff was eventually repurposed for the eventual intro. Anybody who's seen the comparison videos, it's um, it's pretty amazing. But the, the pilot is so good. They sent it off to Japan, it got animated. But yeah, you know, these little little silent reels. Eventually I was like, I've seen the whole thing. And I got to, I think it was the following day, that was the when, when Andy was ill, got to interview like Kevin Altieri. And we were also on these DVDs. We wanted introductions for certain episodes. So I said, I said, they actually did this. I said to one of them, I said, because Kevin Altieri is such a charming man. I said, um, I said, you should be sat in a chair at one point. So we had to see our swivel chairs. And I said, swivel around and be like, oh, I didn't hear you come in. And he actually did that. So we're like, oh, I didn't hear you come in. This is an episode of uh, Real Ghostbusters I directed. I was like, that is so cool. And they had me do a couple of introductions. I think I did one for maybe Ghost Fight, the OK Let's fight the OK Corral and... I haven't seen the episode since 1987. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, that was one of my most vivid memories of, of watching it as a kid was Ghost Fight at the OK Corral. It's, that that shoot off at the end. I, is... I thought that was one of the ones that I still had on a VHS tape that they they released that on VHS. It, it was on VHS, yeah. It was a Magic Window release. Um, yep. But and the other one I did the intro for was like I had to, they were like what episode you want to do and I was like um, this one and the Collect Call of Cthulhu. Or, and I was just like please let me do the the intro for that. And so on the DVD you can click it's like intro by you know. Re, um, uh, no, yeah, it was, I was the only one who did the intro because it was written by Michael Reeves, so I did the intro for that. And I got to meet one of my favourite people from that, that whole um, DVD thing was meeting um, uh, Marsha Goodman, who was the voice director for the show. She literally came in and had a stack of papers. And I was like, well, so she goes, I thought this might be good for, you know, your research and stuff. And I was like, what is it? And she goes, it's all the call sheets for Real Ghostbusters. And I was like, oh, my God. So you see the dates they recorded episodes, the first one. You see <laughs> you see how Frank Welker becomes one of the most popular voice actors in Hollywood at the time because slowly he has to do his own voice work by about season two or three. He's doing his own sessions because he's not available on the dates everybody else is. So it's like Frank's coming in to do his his recordings. But it's so cool because like she was Marsha Goodman, she was such a lovely woman. Um and she was telling me she goes, um, she said, uh, she goes, oh, I've got, uh, I've got this call sheet from this episode, Killer What. I was like, yeah, I love Killer What. I said, and I said to her before she was like, I said, can you tell me, was that, is that James Avery at the very end of, you know, Uncle Phil Shredder? Shredder. I was like, was that, was that James Avery as the voice of like the big monster at the end? She goes, let me have a look at the call sheet. And she's like, yep, there it is. And I was like, what? She goes, yeah. She goes, believe it or not, she goes, I gave James Avery his first animation role. And I was like, oh my oh, God. Holy shit. And yeah, just and all the things have their signatures. So you know, Lorenzo Music, Frank Welker, James Avery. But the other thing is, obviously, Real Ghostbusters was a cartoon shipped out to Japan, and in the back in the eighties, as we know, most of the time, mass credits were produced. So Real Ghostbusters syndicated season, primarily same end credits for all of them. So voice actors, you're only going to get this many. Going for all these call sheets, I was like, wait a minute, you know, this person was on the show. This person, George Takai. Was, did an episode and there's like, oh yeah we did but we had to re-record it with another actor it's like oh wow all these different call sheets and it, it charts like the history of the real ghostbusters where you know slowly the show kind of loses and like the the recording days get less and less that syndicated season that's just a chunk of call sheets and they're, they're all on like i scanned them all and um i believe like the website spook central um uploaded them all in the end he said like can you send them to me and i'll upload them. i was like yeah sure i mean i'm gonna probably use them on my eventual youtube channel but um yeah he uh i think he uploaded them all, but they're fascinating he obviously i think he removed all the signatures but yeah they're um yeah just really fascinating and, and like that was like the kindness marsha goodman didn't have to do that she's like yeah take all this stuff so we we did all that filming the the set came out and it was like super duper popular and then um that was 2008 and then i think it was what well, year? I'm trying to remember now. I say like two thousand, maybe nine. That was the following year. My friends and I, like one week, were in the car driving along in London. We'd always talked about going to New York on holiday. So what are you up to next week? We were talking about New York. So what are you up to next week? Oh, I'm off, and I was like, well, I'm freelancers. And I was like, Should we go to? And my friend just booked it that evening. Went home. His mother's friend worked in booking holidays. You know, at the time. So, travel agent booked it we were in new york the following week so we had no plan but on the way there i bought like a Time Out magazine and i was and it broke it broke down manhattan in sections i'm looking at it going seems pretty easy to navigate it's like it's like yeah i think i can navigate this but i just started going oh there's, there's certain things i want to see i was like we've got to see the ghostbusters firehouse my two friends would be like yeah we've got to do that so we go to the ghostbusters firehouse like one evening um, take photos and stuff. Went the following morning as well, but also like we did, we did random things. Like my friend Paul and I were kind of one evening. It was like a Sunday evening. The other guy we were with, Ahmed, he was like, he goes, "I'm going to stay in tonight." I'm like, why? He's like, the Oscars are on. It's like, yeah, fucking Oscars, man. It's like you're in New York. He's like, no. And plus, he wasn't. In fairness to me, he wasn't feeling to me well. I was like, oh, okay, you stay. So me and Paul decided let's just walk. I said, Paul, do you know what? I said, I'd like to find. University where they film Ghostbusters. And he goes, do you know where it is? I was like, no idea, because this, again, this information wasn't readily readily available. So I look on the Time Out map and I kind of look in. I was like, I think it's so. The, we go to the wrong university first. We go all the way, you know, downtown, 
no, not down here. And we were deciding we were like trying to get our, our steps in. So it's like, fuck it, let's just walk up. We walked up to like, I think it was like 115th or something. So we walked like about 100 and something blocks. Walked all the way up. We found um, uh, Columbia University. And I was like, oh my God, this is where they filmed the opening scenes from Real Ghostbusters. From Ghostbusters. So we go back the following morning and it's clear as then. I start taking photos. And I'm taking photos and I just looked on the floor. I was like, oh my God. He's like, what? And I said, I think that's the wall where Bill Murray, he's like, what? When he's drinking. I was like, I think that's the, the wall where he's sitting. You know, do you know how much a Patton Clark has? No. So we go over to the wall and there's like this annoying iron gate in the way. I was like, that wasn't in the movie. He's like, no, he goes, obviously took it away or they put it up since. So I was like, I'm going to try and recreate the photo. And in fairness to my friend Paul, he did a great job. We didn't have no reference. So I said, I'm going to sit on the wall and kind of like give a thumbs up. I said, take a photo, but kind of get it from this angle. And he was like, yeah, and he, he's terrible at taking photos. He did a really fun good job with this. I took the photo, got home like later that age and found the comparison photo. I was like, oh my God, we actually did it really well. And the, the, the best thing about New York and the worst thing, the best thing um, in terms of being a Ghostbusters fan was just walking through Central Park and going, oh my God, that's the, that's the cafe where Louis Tully's going, let me in, stumbled upon that. Didn't, we weren't going to see it. And I was just like, oh, my God. Um, Did you go bang on the windows? <laughs> yeah, I should have, shouldn't I? <laughs> and then slide down. And then I'm sure the people who work there is like, God, we get this shit every fucking yeah, time. One. <laughs> one of the best um, reference that I ever saw was a show called, oh, my God, it was on Netflix. I watched like, the first two. It said Being Kenny Schmidt. And, I know what um, you're talking about. I haven't watched it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I watched the first two seasons, and I just got a bit bored of it. But they had a guy throughout the episode. You don't realize it until the end. He's like one of the lead, like main characters. He's wearing a blue shirt with a thing underneath. And at the end, he runs up to the restaurant to, to, to see the girl he's in love with. She's having dinner with another guy. He's banging on the glass. And you're like, oh, my God, they're doing Ghostbusters. <laughs> and you realize he's dressed throughout the entire episode like Lewis Tully. With the, the turtleneck neck and everything. Yeah, the, the turtleneck neck and the blue stripy shirt. It's such a great little moment. You're like, oh, I see what they did here. Oh, I'll try to find that. But, um, yeah, so one of the best things was, like I say, stumbling upon things in New York. Um, because I've always said, um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to write Ghostbusters officially at least once and, and pitch it a few times as well. And I've always said that you've got like, you've got the four Ghostbusters, you've got Janine. And I said the character they never talk about when talking about Ghostbusters, I said, is New York City itself. I said, that movie is such a love letter to New York. Yeah, it's kind of New York in the 80s. It's dirty and there's muggers in deleted scenes and all this stuff. But it's still new york is very much a character you don't have that film you can't do that film in los angeles you can't do ghostbusters in los angeles i think that's the only i, I don't know what you guys your take on afterlife was i enjoyed afterlife a lot but the only thing that let it down i thought was just the I, it was it was too sparse but i understood it, you can't just do another new york movie because it's just like yeah they tried that in 2016 in fairness with a very unfunny film <laughs> with an amazing cast and a funny film i still don't know how too polite that. james What's that? Because you're too polite on that movie. Well, no, like I say, like that McCarthy, Feig, and um, oh, Feig. What am I talking about? McCarthy, um, Kristen Wiig. Wig, not Fig, Wig. Um, yeah, Craig. Kristen Wig and the blonde with the glasses whose name I always forget, who's amazing on Saturday Night Live. That's been a great cast. And yet, if you ever see the making of that movie, it's like you can see what they were doing wrong. It's like, we're going to just ad lib because that's what they did in the 80s. It's like, they still had structure. They still had structure to every scene. If you watch all the recent behind-the-scenes footage that's come out on Blu-ray and DVD for the original Ghostbusters, every take was different, but the structure was there every time. It wasn't like, let's just, let's just riff and make some. It's just like, no, yeah. structure is there. Ugh. But, yeah, my problem with Afterlife was that it was in that kind of very sparse setting. I, I did like the story, but it just felt like taking place in the middle of nowhere, there's no character there. It's, it's very... It's almost... The film feels very isolated in itself. But anyway, that's afterlife. But uh, but the bad thing about being in New York was walking here and then walking there and going, in the movie, they make that seem like that's a big... Like, the Ghostbusters literally get in a car, let's run some red lights and do a journey that probably would take about 30 minutes by foot. It's just... I know they've got the kit and everything, but it's... It, it, in the film, you just think all these places are, like, very far away, and it's just like... Everything, and then you realise everything's so bloody local. Because Manhattan, when you think about it, is yeah. it's not vast. You can probably walk from one side to the other in the you know a very short space of time. But you see the movie, it's like, and then other things like, well, they come out of the you know, let's run some red lights. They make a riot. They 
technically they should have made a left when they came out. <laughs> it's, it's stuff like that when you start realizing. Like, huh. But I get back from New York, and then this leads into um, a very short version of this story. Thankfully, um, I, I, I have one of my fellow serial geek artists, Dan Shuning. And I said to him, "So we should we should pitch a Ghostbusters story man, to IDW." He was like, that's a really good idea. So I write a 10-issue story arc, and we send it off, and IDW don't get back to us. Um, eventually they do, and they say, we're not interested. So we, Dan says, do you want me to put it on my Deviant art? I say, yeah, sure, do it. Dan puts it up. Weirdly, and this is the days before, you know, Twitter is in its infancy. This is the days before hashtags and stuff like that. But it got traction. And uh, various websites started contacting us about it, and the New York Daily News um, approached us. It was like, do you want to be interviewed about your Ghostbusters pitch? It's like, really? Like, yeah. It was like, okay. So they obviously thought it was something. So I was interviewed by the New York Daily News. Um, the This story got out there. IDW apparently weren't happy with it, which I get. And they said, like, you know, you really shouldn't have put this stuff out there. And it's like, it wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't say that. But it's like, it was, that was Dan's idea. But I, I support him. We, we got, the, you know, you rejected our pitch or you didn't look at it or didn't care for it. So we put it online. I don't see the harm in that. Obviously, they got bad press out of it, so that I can appreciate. And IDW said, look, uh, we're doing a, a compilation of the comics we've done thus far you know, called The Haunted Holidays Trade Paperback. They said, we've got nine spare pages. Do you want to write a story? I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you pitch you know, pitch us a, a Ghostbusters story. I said, what holidays can I do? They're like, well, Thanksgiving's gone, Easter's gone, or something. Like that. Uh, no, sorry, Christmas is gone. And they said, Thanksgiving's left. I was like, right i was like great i've got to write about a holiday we don't celebrate in england so i kind of um you know sat there and i came up with this nine page story and i laid out the illustrations i sent i, I wrote the script sent off to idw they said it's great came back i did the i laid out the page illustrations sent those to dan dan did an amazing job it got published and the reception was really good there's still a few reviews every once in a while i'll see if i can find them online and um, people talked about the trade paperback. I always remember one review was like, yeah, trade paperback's good. But those nine pages, they were, I remember like, this guy gets Ghostbusters. And I was like, again, Ghostbusters to me was like one of the easiest things to write because what I said to you before, those characters are so well defined. Even in the cartoon as well, at least in that syndicated season, you can't go wrong. It's like, you can't have Egon go, come on, guys, let's do this. You know, Egon's not really that. It, that's that's a Ray thing, you know. Peter's going to hang back. Peter's going to be snarky. Winston, I always like it when they call Winston the everyman because it is it's true. It's like think of something you'd say in that situation. That's that's what Winston would say. Like except for I'm not going to say someone I've seen shit that will turn you white. That's not really something I would say. Um, but yeah, you can you from his you know from that character and Egon's always you know any kind of logistics scientific stuff just make those you know long elaborate speeches. And, yeah, the, the comic went down really well. And so IDW, I've still got the emails, said to me, why don't you um, pitch us some more stories? I was like, yeah, sure, okay. So I wrote, these, I wrote down a few ideas for stories, um, sent them off to IDW. They said, really cool, we'll get back to you. And then, you know, a week turned into two weeks, turned into a few months. I was like, ah, I messaged Dan. I said, hey, yeah, hear anything about... Um, and he's like, no, no, nothing. Because like, oh, that's strange. Goes on and on. Uh, you know, weeks turn into months. Months go by. And then I'll never forget, it was when Facebook had just introduced the main... T Remember Facebook back in the day? You There wasn't a main page. you just go to people's profiles. It was literally just profile, profile, profile. It wasn't like, here's all the profiles. They introduced that timeline thing where suddenly you saw... Tyler's posts, Joe's post, Nathan, you know, that kind of thing. So, oh, like Joe, posted posts. A, Joe posted a burrito. Tyler's complaining about this. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, fucking people. Yeah, it's like, oh, these guys again. But yeah, it was, it was when they introduced that, I'll never forget, I'd come back from work and I'd stand at a friend's place. And I walked in and my laptop was, I opened up my laptop, turned on my laptop. And I was like, yeah, let's check social media. And I go onto Facebook. The first thing I see was, IDW announced new comic, <clears throat> and it was, uh, you know, Ghostbusters, uh, new comic book from IDW. And I was like, oh, they're doing a Ghostbusters comic. And it was written by, I forget who the writer was, but illustrated by Dan Schoening. And I was like, oh, my God. So I was I was bummed that I didn't get the gig, 
But I was really bummed that Dan had never reached out. And so I messaged him. I said, hey, Dan, I said, um, I said, you know, good work on the gig. But, you know, I won't lie. I'm, I'm gutted that, you know, you didn't message me. And, um, yeah, and that's, I guess that's that's where I led the story. But I was just like, oh, that really, so it really, it's going to sound really melodramatic, but it really hurt. And, and people are going to say, oh, you're just jealous. Because I wasn't. I was, I love Ghostbusters. But it was it was the fact that I pitched a comic, and initially IDW had said <laughs> the artwork was too cartoony. They ended up it, they ended up employing Dan for like God ten. They're probably still employing him now to do Ghostbusters. So it's like how cartoony was that artwork? Um, but yeah, and and you know taking nothing away from Dan, but it was he and it was me that suggested that pitch. He and I did that together, and yeah, IDW never reached out again. And I was just like, okay, that's fine. But it really hurt because it was something I was very passionate about. Um, and I, I, yeah, it just, it killed my love of Ghostbusters from, God, that was about 2011, I think, all the way up to, I would say, Afterlife. Because I know it sounds weird. Some people go, oh, I hated Afterlife or whatever. But I was like, it's not, that's not the point about it. It's, I, my friend and I went to see Afterlife. We really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed lots of the kind of nots, the, I'd say lots of nots, the original. The film was pre, pretty much, Here's the original movie, but different. We've even got the same music. It's like a bit of an over reliance on the original score, but you know. And but watching Afterlife and coming out of that, I was like, oh, I I can watch Ghostbusters again. This isn't, you know, it, it sounds really. People are going to think it sounds really melodramatic, but it's no, it doesn't. you work, you, you you love something, and I love Ghostbusters so much, and you you put so much heart and passion into something, and then it's like, are oh, we going to do it without you? And it's like, okay, but. You know, I, I don't know. It just it just felt really weird, and then um, so yeah, it really killed my love of Ghostbusters, which really sucked. I, haven't, I wasn't able to watch the cartoon for the longest time, and then the start of this year, Afterlife came out on Blu-ray, and they they released, and I can't remember who it was. I think it was Spook Central or one of the, one of those Ghostbusters websites that's been going for since the nineties. Said, um, hey, uh, there's the word print available, and I was like. Oh, I wouldn't mind seeing the work print of Ghostbusters, begrudgingly. Sounds fucking nuts. <laughs> so I, um, so our man Doosan was able to uh, secure that for me. And he was like, here's the work print. I was like, okay. So I remember it took me a few days to, to watch it. I was, I was living in my, currently not living in my lovely apartment in London. I was living in London in my apartment <clears throat> with the private cinema. Took the cinema, went downstairs and I put the work print in, and I sat there in this big cinema. Oh, this is a big cinema, but like it's a big screen, you know, the smallest cinema. It sucks to be James E. Talk, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it? It does now that I'm living at my parents again. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I sat there and watched the work print. And as I say, I, I honestly think anybody who watches the work print will come away with the same emotion that I did, which is, oh my God, that original movie is as in the movie we saw growing up, is so bloody good. It's such a near perfect. I understand people don't get it, don't like it. It's whatever. a perfect film to me. It's not near but, to me. That's a, that's a perfect yeah, film. Yeah, I would agree yeah, with that. I, 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 could, I could never, there's nothing about that original movie that would go, eh, tweak this or that or nope. this or that. It's just, you know, so, so good. And um, I'm watching, like I say, Afterlife combined with watching the work print, and watching the work print reminded me of all the story beats and all the kind of moments and all the bits I liked about the, you know, Bill Murray's acting, how Ramis, Only Hudson, Dan Aykroyd, Sigourney Weaver, uh, uh, Rick Moranis, all these different. I was like, oh, God, I really do fucking love this movie. And I um, and I watched the work print. I really enjoyed it. I remember like watching the work print and getting like, even though the work print has no music in it. But even at, I was still getting emotional at some points, going like, "Oh shit, this is really, this is a really special movie to me. It's really, it's a really important movie in my life." And then a couple of days later, I had the cinema again because of course I did, and I think I, I think that was the same, maybe a different night. But I watched um, the, the the final, the finished version of Ghostbusters, and I was like, "Oh fuck, I think I love this. I think I can watch Ghostbusters again." And then subsequently moved out of my apartment. Into, uh, in London to my parents because <laughs> that's the way life is sometimes moved to my parents got my whole setup prepared and I was just like there was a time prior to the whole you know lo losing love of Ghostbusters where I would watch Ghostbusters 
probably every other week of my life. I just loved it. I was not not sitting there like watching it, but like working on something and it's on in the background because it's that it's like watching He Man or any eighties cartoon. It's that familiarity. That's one of the most coziest films to sit and watch. I mean, I, yeah. I don't. I don't it, it requires no special move because it's so fucking good. You can just yeah. put it on as background or just enjoy it for the perfection that it is. And, and, and these days, I can I can I can glance up and see the library goes and I'll go. Optimus Prime's death, though. I'm still like, no, dum, 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 dum. I, can't, I can't be doing that. Um, I know d going to do something at some point, send me a video and go like, hey, I've got a video for you to watch. It's really rare, and it'll be just Optimus Prime's head. It, it, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be the new Rick roll. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I found some unseen He-Man footage. I'm like, oh, my God, what is it? Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> just crying. Uh, uh, seeking counsel. I, 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 we we should make that a thing. Are we... Um, well, go ahead, Nathan. No, I was just going to say we should make that a, a new thing. It could be the new Rick Roll to just trick people of our generation to just, because it was so traumatizing for, yeah. for kids just to have that. It's like, oh, you got to check this out. And it's just that little of him dying. Dying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have to ask because this movie had everlasting impact. But to this day, I don't know if we'll ever get it done. But my love for fire poles all comes from this movie. Of course. I, I see in Ray, hey, does this poll still work? You know, you guys, like, guys got to try, you you try this. And then when, like, it's a call. And then see them go down. And, like, I, I would get so <laughs> excited, like, watch, get ready. Because I want to slide on the fire pole. Like, go go to, like, the little, uh, uh, the, what the fuck, the railing. And I'm like, <laughs> I, oh, I want to do that. Slide down. And, oh, I, 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 to this day, that and the 60s Batman show, I've always yeah. wanted to have a fire pole in my home or wherever. That's why he goes so to strip clubs needs... so much. And he just goes <laughs> to admire the poles. Down those poles. I watch them slide down poles instead. It's kind of oil, bittersweet. Yeah. The, the funny <laughs> yeah. thing about the um, the word print is um, the scene where they slide down the pole. It's a it's a car wall, and Ray Ray slides down. You don't really hear this in the movie. When Venkman slides down, he's he's humming to himself because okay. the word print doesn't have any music, and he's going like because he's got the chopstick in his mouth. Yeah. He's like, dur, 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 and he comes down. Um, uh, and the other thing is the scene where, uh, not spoilers, the scene where he's showing, um, you know, <laughs> what do you think? I think this building should be condemned. You know, that whole scene uh-huh. is much longer. And it starts off with Egon saying something. And she's like, and she goes to, to Venkman, she goes, who's he? And the the way Bill Murray goes, he's my dad. <laughs> it's, just, it's such a weird <laughs> little moment. And then she says to him, she goes, at the end of that scene, rather than, you know, we'll take it. And she goes, good. And then the scene cuts to, the the Dennis, oh, Dennis building, yeah. In this version, she goes good. Then she goes, oh, what are you going to call yourselves? And he goes, Ghostbusters. She goes, oh, this place is perfect for you. <laughs> it's it's really <laughs> really good because you get takes like that. And I, like is I this say, work print available on like the new like uh, the the box set? It was. I think it was on out? like a crazy expensive box set that was released, like a Necto Trap or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I remember hearing it, but I, I and I remember seeing the work print listed on there but i guess i just assumed it was just a well like i didn't know it was going to incorporate all that in there just if i'd have known that because i like i don't want to own the fucking 2016 film like i don't no they just put a digital code no you know that. that wasn't on there okay okay i, I <laughs> no, I, even I, the I owners the of bit, ghostbusters I, don't want it okay because I, I thought paul paul fig like bitched about it oh he know, did hey, yeah, so I thought they, they're making you buy that in the box. I'm like, well, fuck that. Like, I ain't doing no, that. No, 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 no. They, they, they announced we're releasing one and two and Afterlife. And he and Paul Fogg, and so they said, okay, we'll offer like a digital download. Yeah, they put this. a digital okay, code in there. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. now that I know that, um, is the is – the, because this is 4K presentation, right, with, the, yeah. with this box set. Is that Ghostbusters better than the single version that came out? Because the, the, the first version they put out is pretty – it's not very good. I don't know. Like um, again, Dusan, the master of the uh, the, the yeah. uh, that, acqu- acquisitions. That he, set he, is expensive. We're yeah, talking like what two, three hundred bucks. Yeah, so, uh, well, Amazon has it for two hundred and thirty. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, we'll, we'll get you the work. Yeah, print, we'll get worry. you the work print. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 like I say. If the, <laughs> I remember when I bonded with a, a work colleague back in the early noughties. We were we were sat in a pub in, in London. And usually it's like a Friday night. We're all there, like all of us together. But it's just me and my friend Mark. We sat there and we were drinking. And we were just talking. We both knew we loved Ghostbusters. And I can't remember how it started, but we just started like from the first scene, just talking about it. Oh, I love that. 
And then we just end up quoting the entire film. It's like, oh, I think we just bonded because we know this film inside out. And it was so funny. And then we did this whole thing. And so when I came to write the nine page IDW story, I included not only his character, but his likeness. So there's like the guy they visit is a guy called Mr. Fairless. And that's based on my friend who looks exactly like that. I was just like, yeah, that's kind of my, my I said, so well, I remember saying to Mark Harper, I was like, I wrote you into the comics. So technically you're part of the official Ghostbusters universe. Because that was the other thing as well when I wrote that comic. They said um, the script would have to have gotten across, gone across the desk of, I believe it was um, maybe all three, Ackwood, Ramos and Reitman. And it may just be like a, a tick or whatever. It's like, hey, the idea that it went across their desk, that's still pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like I've, I've learned to, you know, I'm in a position now where it's like, oh no, I, I, I love Ghostbusters again. I can watch it and be... And I can feel that warmth and that joy. And, uh, you know, I've been talking about this YouTube channel I'm launching. It's like, I get to make videos about Ghostbusters. And it's going to be not, a, oh, God, I made videos. It's like, I'm going to make videos about the real Ghostbusters and and how there was, like, naked like naked characters in two episodes that I can talk about. That, or three, no, two, two episodes. And I can talk about Japanese studios working on the real Ghostbusters and I can talk about this and that and it's oh my god I, I'm so looking forward to talking about Ghostbusters again um even though it's unofficially but you know fuck it it's um yeah I, I, I'm I, I'd rather be I'm doing, glad I'd your passion's back though because that must have been a nightmare oh. to be 10 years without having any of that kind of love and I couldn't passion even watch the movie if it, if it came on TV I'd be like no and it's just god I couldn't imagine living without Ghostbusters dude seriously like, there, man, there were certain things where I, I jumped back into it for a reason like when when Harold Ramis passed away obviously that was absolutely gutting yeah and um that was one of my favorites if you ever see that footage of Bill Murray at the the Oscars and he's with Amy Adams and he's presenting an award for best comedy director and um and as he's and it's such a beautiful scene and, you know people are critical of bill murray you know but i suppose this is the modern day we live in it's like here's a person it's like i must criticize them but he um there's this scene where he's you know he's he's they've read out the awards for you know uh, sorry not the awards the nominees for this maybe uh, comedy director and he goes oh we forgot one and you can see this is my way amy adams bless her is like Oh shit! He's going off script. It's Bill Murray, and he goes, uh, he goes, ha he goes. Oh, we forgot one. Harold Ramis for Kelly Shack Ghostbusters and Groundhog Day, and you see in Bill Murray's eyes this sadness of like, I really because if you the, the infamous, not infamous the story is that they fell out. Yeah, after Groundhog after, Day, wasn't it? after Groundhog Day, yeah. and they just didn't talk. And you know, and Bill Murray has been. I think he's publicly known to be a bit of a curmudgeon, like you know, can be a bit grouchy and stuff, and hold grudges. Uh, Harold Ramis always came off like a really charming, lovely guy. And, yeah, you can see when Bill Murray says this, there's just this, you see this, like, real sadness in his face of just, like, oh, you realise that, you know, you kind of messed up, regardless of your pride and that. You know, they they made up, at, like, I think, on his deathbed. But, um, yeah, it's, re it's really one of those beautiful moments. And, like, I remember, like, jumping into Ghostbusters because of that once. But, yeah, I just couldn't really, you know, I never, I never, it sounds really, really, Maybe it sounds petty, but I'd never read a single IDW comic of the Ghostbusters. I remember like Dan emailed me, God, years, maybe a year after the comic, he started working on the comic and he said, Oh, I included your likeness in an issue. And I was just like, Okay. I couldn't even bother to pick it up. <laughs> That's fair. And, no, I mean, I wouldn't read anything Rob David wrote because I'm not writing, so fuck him. So <laughs> I understand. Um, yeah, well, I mean, look, that's, that's that's because you're writing fanfic, Tyler. And what we know, what we oh, know. Oh, that's is, right. Yeah, anybody who works officially is producing quality canon. content. Mm -hmm. Yep, holy content. Um, but yeah, James, holy... I was going to say, not to cut you off, I know you said you were almost wanting on a timer of yeah, two I hours. Yeah, probably be making a move. Yeah, short. I, I will yeah. say this, though. Because I love it. Because I would love. Thanks, sure. I know James, you got his channel, but I would love us to do like a commentary on a particular Ghostbusters episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or even doing. Ghostbusters 2 commentary. Right? <laughs> like, Do you know what? That would be interesting. I think James, I, I think we could, you know, you know, well, maybe not Joe, but, you know, may, maybe we could turn James's you know, perspective on this, you know? I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sorry, but uh, On Our Own by Bobby Brown is... is, is yeah, is, I, I, I love that song. And it's yeah. superior to Ray Parker's Ghostbusters. I, I listened to that in the gym. Uh, I, I, I don't know I'm about sorry, that. There's, I, I'm saying, like, in terms of me listening to it. Do you know what? I would... Ghostbusters... The Bray Parker song is perfect. It's perfect. For, it is the Ghostbusters theme, yeah. by far. 
but on but our own to me it's is... not a song that i'd be like i'm gonna play in my car and you know yeah whereas on our own is a song that you can listen to out of context of ghostbusters yeah. i listen to shit in my car trying to go get food go get anything i love the original fucking Ghostbusters. Well, I'm, I'm saying, i do too you and i get excited pop it in but, your cassette player there joe <laughs> yeah, I got my own cassette player. We'll have some fun with this shit. I'll pop into my He-Man cassette player. I have one of those. We'll get James <laughs> loving it. But James, before we wrap it up, oh, make Joe's sure you promote bitches. It, any of your pages, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, getting people ideas of what's going on with the new uh, YouTube channel and just pop anything you want before we get off. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I always tell these days, I always say the best way to follow me is probably on Instagram, which is Serial Geek, as in Breakfast Serial, Serial Geek 77. Um, yeah, I, mean, I guess I'm currently working on my YouTube channel, hence this silly, silly background at the moment. Um, I just finished the um, introduction sequence, which I'm rather happy about. And then, yeah, I, I, I launched that on August the 1st. And my plan is, it's like behind the curtain, as it were, I want to have like at least 20 videos prepared so that I can put those out in the, you know, from August to December, like maybe 20 to 25 videos. Okay. put those out so that there's content already you know what i mean like as opposed to gotcha. oh shit i've got to rush to make more content and then maybe in those months i can go i'm gonna sit down and write a bunch more scripts and to make make episodes are you yeah, gonna I'm, be I'm covering gonna... like uh like like one or two shows and doing multiple videos that devote to those are you going to do like spider-man's amazing friends world ghost Buster, yeah it's, everyone's Star. going to be like an individual one. so like the first video i'm doing is probably going to be like um a He-Man one, and then the next one's a Transformers one. The next one's like a Ninja Turtles, maybe. Yeah, and there's a. You're gonna give a Dungeons like, and Dragons, hopefully. Oh yeah, Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons stroke real Ghostbusters because there's a there's a connection in one episode where they weirdly cross over, but it's something that I mean, it's something I made public in Serial Geek and in on the is it Dungeon Dragons and real Ghostbusters DVDs. I wrote this bit of trivia. I thought, oh, I'll turn it into a YouTube video. I'm not sure everybody's seen that. So yeah, everyone's going to be like a different cartoon. Um, the, the, when I posted, I posted like just the teaser image today of like the actual kind of shot, and someone said commentaries, and I was like, yeah, I mean, commentaries are the only the only problem about doing a commentary. I think is going to be if I try and do a commentary, and then it gets copyright struck. So I thought maybe the way around that is to I mean, Do sounds probably somebody who knows really all about this. He's he, he understands all that stuff far better than I. Is that maybe I do commentaries where I'll do the commentary. And maybe have the audio, you know, obviously, as you do with the commentary, lower. But instead of having the whole cartoon, which sounds like a copyright nightmare, is you just have, like, frames Images or, like, a it. skill yeah. every, yeah. you know, yeah. 10 seconds or something. Yeah. I thought that may be a good way to do it. And there may be, maybe if there's a sequence I want to point out, I'll kind of have a little animation in there. But I, I, I really, the last thing I want to happen on my channel is just to get, like, copyright strikes every 10 right. seconds. Yep. But apparently, like... Apparently, when you publish to YouTube now, do some of the same. It's pretty. Very it checks cool. for it. Yeah, it does. It does like a pre-check. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. I mean, you know, thus far, I mean, when when I eventually load up the introduction sequence, I can't imagine I'm going to get too much problem with that because no, one, as, as long as each of the clips doesn't go too long, so it's like you can have it two, three seconds, maybe a little longer, switch to another clip from something, then you should be fine. I, I would think. Oh, yeah, I very much definitely did that. Um, but like when it comes to episodes, obviously I probably will, like if I'm talking about, for example, the Inspector Gadget pilot, which is an episode I want to do, um, I'm probably going to have clips from that. So I don't know if I do clips without sound because I'm narrating over it. So like these are, I guess, bridges I've got across. And again, like Doosan seems to be like really on board with all that stuff. So I'll, I kind of, I'm sure I'll run stuff by him and he's like, no, I'm like, okay. <laughs> So we'll right, see what happens. Yeah. I like how All Joe's right. just like, oh, no, come on, wrap it up. What? No, 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 because I know he's got to get to sleep. I know that Nathan's got to get food. I got to masturbate. <laughs> but, um, um, well, hey, it well was hang on, hey, hey, Joe, hang on. That's right. Yeah. James, really quick, the, the stuff that you had, because you said that you made like a little list of from Ghostbusters that you had on your laptop there, that just oh, notes yeah. that you took. What was some of that stuff? Because you never really, unless those were bullet points, oh, no, you were just kind of hitting I think I covered them all. DVD oh, okay. box set, all right. Los Angeles, okay. um, New York, IDW pitch, um, Afterlife work print, oh, Rediscovered right. Love. Okay, there. cool. There you go. I want to show this up real quick. I used to wear this when I was five years old. I pretty much wore it every day. Went to school in it all the time. I got my little Ghostbusters. Oh, it's real clean. <laughs> tan, Good tan condition. Outfit. Hey, nothing fake. I can't see. I can't see Nathan on the screen. So you I'm, can't. I'm, That's weird. Oh, you, you haven't seen me the whole time. 
No, I've got I've got Joe here. I've got Tyler here. Oh, uh, must have Ty done that thing. Oh. All right. Uh, well, that's a bummer, shit. man. Oh, he'll get you a picture. He's showing he'll up get his, kit, his yeah, kid-sized Ghostbusters outfit. Tyler's a circle right now. Yeah, it's just, really clear. It ah. is really clear. Image on that, though, yeah. right there. Even though it's right. mirrored. But, yeah, back off, man. I'm a Ghostbuster. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I'll say my closing thing and then pass it to Nathan to do the closing thing. But if you're new to this channel, make sure you like, subscribe, share, and ring that bell so you can always be notified when we go live. And Nathan. We'll see you in the future to talk about the past. See ya.